Hey, Dan. Um, can you pull up, like, I don't know, something interesting on your your, your screen? Like, a, just like a, even a basketball, just like spinning or something? I, I don't even know. I can make a quick graphic. I don't even know. I'll I can, just, like, look around the table. I'll just do this. I'll, I'll send this to you. Uh, I'll, I think I'm going to throw on my... Uh, who's playing? LSU. LSU St. Bonaventure. Uh, I never was a big Eminem guy, to be honest with you. I start watching ever since your cousin came and played a couple of those songs that I'm like, he still spits. I just don't like sometimes, like, he goes a little too far with the lyrics. It's just like, you can't even play it depending on the audience. Oh, yeah. Bitch, this is fame, not clout. You, you, you know what that's about. Watch your mouth. 
Did uh, anybody come to the town the second half? I don't you think play is going to be like usual? Like great. Niggas yeah, they're trying to stay doing too much. My taxes, I'm too tired. Virgil got a paddock on my wrist going nuts. Niggas caught me slipping once, okay, so what? Someone hit your block up, I tell you for us. Man, a house in Rosewood, this shit too flush. Cool, man. Got ring bottles off. Life is good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Twenty thousand for the cheap frame on the nigga frame of a bitch. Ooh. Not Spain, but not the main model of a bitch. Got oh, three dollars on the rain truck of a bitch. Ooh. I was in the shop serving cocaine. Ooh. Ain't been the same thing. Ooh. Granted, she was standing right there. I want to kick the play on the brick. I made the little niggas go hey when I tell the man in this bitch. Ooh. I'd have been down bad in them trips, had to ride that shit. Ooh, who gave you pills and gave that guts? Put them in your dick. Too many crimes, big zip, don't need to play in this shit. Nothing but nine, it's like I'm oh, no. so mad at this bitch. They had to count on my life. She's down on your air balls. I'm on a PJ line, he loves bad boy, so sticky. Ooh, I'm trying to tote that drink on Monday and then it's that shit. They got a stretch of nigga, how we gonna die for this shit? Yeah, I ride for my niggas, I lie to my bitch. Some people are in the uh, live stream. We all good with the mic? Yeah. Jeremy? on fashion pretty girl and you let go got time but you got goals hey baby why you always in the mood fuck around like i'm brand new i ain't trying to tell you what to do but try to play cool Baby, I ain't playing by your rules. Everything look better with a view. Why you always in the mood? Fuck around like you're brand new. I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but try to play cool. Baby, I ain't playing by your rules. Everything look better with a view. I can never get yeah. attached. When I start to feel I am attached. So I was in a feeling bad. Baby, I am not your dad. It's not all you want from me. I just want some company. Girls, obvious elephant in the room. We're part of it. Don't act so confused. And you upsetting it, now I'm in the mood Now we arguing in my bedroom We play games of love to avoid the depression We've been here before and I won't be a victim Why you always in the mood? Fuck around like I'm brand new I ain't gonna tell you what to do But try to play cool Baby, I ain't playing by your rules Everything look better with a view Why you always in the mood? Fuck around like I'm brand new I ain't tryna tell you what to do But try to play cool 
baby, I ain't playing by your rules. Everything look better with a view. So I can try to pay your love on a regular. When you could be blowing up, just gonna show you love. I will never let a shorty go and set me up. Only thing I need to know is if you wet enough. I'm talking slick back, kick back, gang sipping forties. You keep playing that nerd today with your shorty mismatch face. That was way before you know me. Got a lot of love, but you better shake it for me. We play games of love to avoid the depression. We've been here before, and I won't be a bit. But you always in the mood, fuck around like I'm brand new. I ain't tryna tell you what to do, but try to play cool. Maybe I ain't playing by your rules. Everything look better with a view. Why you always in the mood? Fuck around like I'm brand new. I ain't tryna tell you what to do, but try to play cool. Maybe I ain't playing by your rules. Everything look better with a view. Yeah. Sides to the story, yours and mine, and the goddamn truth, girl. Two lies that you told me. Say you love me and you hate me. I don't know what to do, girl. One thing for sure, you can better that something, baby. I want more, but I need to know. Can you make me a promise to always be honest? Fucked up. You put my heart in the headlock. Usually it's me that only wanna make the bed rock. Stuck up like a robbery with red dots. Really no surprise you telling lies to make my head hot. You know what they say. Every dog has his day. Every bitch wanna play with me. You should be ashamed. Cause I would feel the same if I did what you did to me. Three sides to the story. Y'all and mine and the goddamn truth, girl Two lies that you told me Say you love me and you hate me I don't know what to do, girl One night for sure You can bet it at something, baby I want more But I need to know Can you make me a promise To always be honest Start with a kiss and do it a dub Better if you leave Cause I feel better when you gone Time is on my wrist and it's getting numb Thought you knew it all So baby, why you playing dumb? You know what they say Every dog has his day Every bitch wanna play with me You should be ashamed Cause I would feel the same If I did what you did to me Three sides to the story Yours and mine in the goddamn truth, girl Two lies that you told me Say you love me and you hate me I don't know what to do, girl One night for sure You can bet it at something, baby I want more But I need to know Can you make me a promise To always be honest I get those goosebumps every time. Come around, yeah. You ease my mind, you make everything feel fine. Worry about those comments, I'm way too numb. Yeah. It's way too dumb, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time. I need the Heimlich. Throw that to the side, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah. When you're not around, when you throw that to the side, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah. 713 to the 21, yeah, I'm riding. Why they on me? Why they on me? I'm flying, sipping low key. 
I'm slipping low key and I just trying to ride her. I get those goosebumps. Come around, yeah. You ease my mind. You make everything feel fine. Worry about those times. I'm way too numb, yeah. It's way too dumb, yeah. I get goosebumps every time. I need the hype. Throw that to the side, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah. You're not around when you throw that to the side, yeah. When I'm pulling up right beside ya, pop star Lil Mariah. When I text kick game wireless, throw a stack on the Bible, never Snapchat or took Molly. She fall through plenty, her and all her guineas. Yeah, we at the top floor, right there off Doheny. Yeah, oh no, I can't fuck with y'all. Yeah, when I'm with my squad, I cannot do no wrong. Yeah, saucepan in the city, don't get misinformed. Yeah, they gon' pull up. On you. Yeah, we gon' do some things, some things you can't relate. Yeah, cause we from a place, a place you cannot stay. Or you can't go, or I don't know, or pack the fuck up. All. I get those goosebumps every time yeah. you come around, yeah. You ease my mind, you make everything for fine. Worry about those times, I'm way too numb, yeah. It's way too dumb, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time. I need the hype. Throw that to the side. Yo. I get those goosebumps every time. Yeah, when you're not around, when you throw that to the side. Yo. I get those goosebumps every time. What you do? Where you at? Where you at? Oh, you got plans. You got plans. Don't say that. Shut your trip. I'm sipping wine. Sip, sip. In a row. Trip, trip. I look too good. Look too good. To be alone. Ooh, My house clean. clean. My pool warm. Ooh, warm. Just shake. Smooth like a newborn. We should be dancing, romancing in the east wing and the west wing of this mansion. What's happening? I am playing no games. Everyone that I say is coming straight from the heart. So if you're trying to lay in this door, I'ma leave the door open. I'ma leave the door open. I'ma leave the door open, girl. I'ma leave the door open, open. you feel the way I feel, and you want me like I want you tonight, baby. Tell me that you're coming through. I won't bite uh-uh. unless you like. Unless you like. If you smoke, what you smoke? I got the haze. Oh, hey. And if you're hungry, girl, I got the lace. Oh, oh, oh baby, don't keep me waiting. This song could be making drama. I'm talking kissing, cuddling, rose petals in the bathtub. Girl, it's jumping, it's bubbling. I am playing no games. Every word that I say is coming straight from the heart. I'ma leave the door open. I'ma leave the door open. I'ma leave the door open, girl. Let you feel the way I feel, and you want me like I want you to know Tell me that you're coming through.
take a step out Get some in now, let your edge out To some ice, book, you'll be heavy in my mind Get the heck out, I need rest now Got me bummed out, you so, you so, you Baby, baby, babe I've been on my empty mind, shit I should have kept from two to the best in me I will be that I This the big fall Gonna sit you down and listen to this real talk Ain't no first or second option, this the default Turning picks until these dollars gonna let them fall Winning down these daily winnings like an aerosol Analytics calculated just to win it all Problems when it comes to choosing, we got all them solved Got the picks that need and fix, then you know who to call Cause this the, cause this the, cause this the pick fall is right that's jay live official everyone go check him out right now on apple music spotify or right here on instagram i don't know if you guys are seeing this on instagram or on youtube but at the time being go check out jay live official and again welcome to the pickball today we're going live and and currently we're waiting for the game to begin we're looking at lsu the eight nine matchup lsu uh the eight seed taking on saint bonaventure the nine seed so obviously before we even hop in i want to get everyone's kind of picks before the game even starts i think that'll kind of be a, the best place to start so let's start with dan to Ooh. my right dan Give me your pick, St. Bonaventure, LSU, and then kind of break it down. All right, well, I guess I'm going to start off pretty hot because I think I'm against everyone here, at least sitting at this table. And I'm probably against a lot of people in the country right now because you have an LSU team that obviously played well in the SEC tournament. They're coming in on a high, probably. I think they might get knocked down a little bit, though. I think the St. Bonaventure team might be a little underrated. But like Andy said before, LSU, their key is really dominating the paint. If they could do that, if St. Bonaventure shoots the ball well, it should be okay. They're one of the best defensive teams in the country. If they could hold LSU to like 60, 65 points, I think they should be fine. I'm on the Bonnies with the points. I think they're getting two. I'd probably buy it to three, though. So I'm on St. Bonaventure plus three. Interesting. Dan buying it. We'll go to Andy <laughs> all the way to the left of the screen here, all the way, uh, I think, on the right of the screen, actually, for everyone out there. But Andy, <laughs> hop in and give your pick of the day. Absolutely. And uh, my pick for this game, at least, I'm, I'm riding with LSU. I believe the money line was around 125. Uh, minus 130, and I would take that instead of the points just to be safe. I agree with Dan. I think it'll be a close game, but I think LSU has too much offensive firepower, and if the Bonnies get in any form of foul trouble, they don't really have much depth from the bench, so they're in a lot of trouble in that instance as well, and I think LSU will be physical inside and get to the interior, get some boards and stuff, and expose this Bonnie team that plays in an Atlantic 10 conference that isn't as strong as the SEC, and I think they're in a going in an upward direction right now. I mean, almost won the SEC championship, lost by a point on a tough missed shot inside uh, in the final seconds. So I think they are a little underseated here as well and feel a little disrespected and come out and hungry, come out hungry and motivated and get a W. All right, so Andy's going with LSU. Dan's on St. Bonaventure, and the game's about to begin, but uh, obviously we're going to go to Frank next, and then I'll cap it off quickly. So, Frank, quickly, what's your pick uh, before the game begins? Yeah, I think I agree with Andy here. I think that LSU looks to establish inside and, and really bring the physicality to the Bonnies again, like Andy sort of said, really make them uh, show that they deserve to be here and, and really prove that the SEC is such a tough conference. But, I mean, I do think it's a close game. I think that uh, I have LSU minus two. But, again, from, from like Dan's perspective, I think it could be a really close game. So if you're on the Bonnies, I would say, you know, consider buying a point or if it's at two and a half, maybe that half point to get the three. Absolutely. And, and so for me, I'm actually on St. Bonaventures with Dan. I actually placed it earlier because we're talking about, uh, you know, a team that obviously got hot and, and, and going back to LSU. I know Andy kind of touched on it briefly, but LSU has been a team that got hot uh, late in the season. And, and and for me, I just think St. Bonaventures, even though they don't play the same caliber competition, it kind of reminds me of a few teams that have been in the tournament so far that played yesterday. But St. Bonaventure is very, very good. I mean, they're very good and, and pretty much a complete team. And I'm interested to see, and, and to be honest with you, LSU and the whole SEC uh, really didn't play well um, in, in the tournament. That's or in the Big Ten's another one that yeah, that's that, what I was going to say too. Didn't really, you know, have a great first day in the tournament. And obviously, you have a few teams from the Big Ten that'll make it uh, a little bit deeper. But obviously, seeing uh, you know them struggle early is interesting because people always want to talk about the Big Ten as one of the best conferences in the country. And I'm not saying it's not, but in this tournament, it, it, it's kind of proven. You know, comparatively to, to just kind of 
dwindle away. Well, yeah, I agree. I mean, also you look at LSU and SEC school, obviously they're an eight seed. So obviously in the SEC, they were, they didn't play great basketball and think throughout the whole entire season. I think they were definitely a team that, like we said, has come a complete long way. And I'm with Frank. Frank, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little nervous that you went minus two. Because again, I'm not big into like laying like little points like that. Obviously, if I you're agree. if you're confident though in LSU, 100%, you get a better line at it, obviously. I just think it's one of those games that it's going to come down to the wire, especially with a shooting team like the Bonnies. The minus two is a little dangerous. I, I, I will admit, I think it's a little tricky. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think I actually do have, have money line. I oh, okay. All right. I, I mean, I, I not that I don't think but, it's going to hit because who knows what's going to happen in this game. It's but scary to take that minus two. All right, so, definitely. So for everyone out there, the game just tipped two minutes ago. Uh, we're, you know, again, looking at the under here. No one scored yet, as as I say, at a three balls up and no good for LSU. But it's 0-0 here two minutes into the ball game. Um, and, and so one of the points, and I kind of wanted to note it, and that's kind of funny that it's still 0-0, but one of the points I wanted to note is, a lot of unders have been hitting. So, Andy, kind of yeah. talk about how the unders have been, uh, you know, playing throughout the course of this tournament. And do you think that's something that will, you know, continue throughout the, the rest of the tournament? Uh, I mean, yesterday we saw it a lot. The under started 9-0, and I believe, actually, I saw. But then it only ended at 12-9. and So the overs kind of picked up later in the day. But I feel like these earlier games, these kind of kids, not, not that they're not woken up for the game or something, but it's early afternoon. You're used to playing at night, kind of. So playing that afternoon kind of feel of a game, might just be different and playing in a gym that you haven't played in probably before right now in the spotlight, maybe having fans there for the first time as well all season, not having played there. Some people might be a little shell shocked or surprised or a little, you know, from the moment. Yeah, I honestly, and there's our first basket of the game. LSU goes up to nothing on the dunk from Trenton Watford. No, Sorry, I, Dan. No, no, you're good. I think that's completely what it is. I think there's just a lot of these teams. I mean, I can't blame. It's funny though, because I feel like a lot of teams that obviously have the pressure would be the higher seeded teams because we see the, uh, like the 14 seeds, the 15 seeds, like an Oral Roberts come in. They have nothing to lose. They're there yeah. to kill everyone's bracket. They're in a position. They're in a win-win regardless. You're not supposed to win that game. But when you do, that's the upsets you like to see. So I think for a lot of these kids, it is nerve-wracking. I feel bad. Ohio State went out pretty in a pretty tough way. And a team I think a lot of people had going to the Final Four. I know, Matt, I think you had him going pretty deep. I had him going pretty deep. Can we talk about it again? I'm sorry. Ohio State. Ohio no, State, yeah. yeah. Ohio State was a team that I had going uh, into the Elite Eight. I think I had them losing uh, there. But I had them going pretty far in the tournament, uh, nonetheless. And, and to watch them go out in the first round, especially after the way it went down. Because, you know, your dad called in uh, after the show yesterday, and we talked to him briefly, uh, mm -hmm. Frank, uh, Mr. Noel. Um, and, and so he called in and, and we talked for a while and he was talking about how Ohio State kind of just fell off the bandwagon yeah. late in the game and everything kind of crumbled, especially down the stretch in regulation and then right into overtime. And it came down to, I know Frank and I were talking about it, but it came down to missing free throws and turning the ball over again. Ohio State had the opportunity, was on the line in regulation to win the ball game, goes one for two, two consecutive times, missed the front end of the, of the one and one, I believe, yeah. twice maybe even yeah. uh, later in the ball game. So you're talking about just miss free throws, turnovers. And I talk about it every single day. That is how you lose games. That's the perfect recipe to lose games in this tournament, even if you are the better team. And again, we're watching the game here where I think both these teams are pretty evenly matched. It's going to be a great I game on the stretch. So uh, it's going to be fun. An interesting one too. U UNCG right now is only down three to Florida State at half. I know, big too early. They I, know, nice little comeback. I know that was a game that a lot of people, I know Florida State, again, is one of those Jekyll Hyde teams that you don't know when they're going to show up. We could see a Florida State like we saw against Georgia Tech. Or we could see a Florida State go up against like a Duke or a top dog where they look like they could be the best team in the country. And everyone thinks they're going to win the whole entire tournament. I got, I don't buy it yet. I think Florida State definitely has the potential to do it. But they got to prove it to me a little bit. Again, it's their first game. The second half, they could definitely blow UNCG out. But what was the spread of that? Was it like 10, right? It was, it was 10, 10 and a half. 10 and a half. Believe. That's that, I, it's gonna, You know, it's probably going to be right there. I don't even know if I'd lay the 10, though. I think, again, I don't like laying points. And that's a lot to lay against a Florida State team that, if Scotty Barnes doesn't really get going, they're kind of in trouble. They're kind of like Syracuse and Buddy Beheim a little bit. If Scotty has a good game, Florida State plays well. If Buddy plays a good game, we saw what happened last night. So speaking of speaking of Syracuse and speaking of the games yesterday, uh, I kind of wanted to get my question out there. And, and again, throw in the the chat here, the live chat. If you guys have any questions, our way. Um, but I kind of wanted to get your take, everyone on the on the table here, and, and kind of just talking about. The biggest upset of yesterday. Obviously, the Ohio State is is the biggest upset as it turns out from seedings perspectives. But was there a matchup or anything that kind of surprised you, or, or, or that that obviously wasn't LSU, but but that surprised you guys uh, nonetheless? Mm. And what was the biggest thing that you took away from yesterday? Well, to be honest, the reason I'm actually against LSU this game is because I saw Tennessee play Oregon State, 
and I don't trust the Big Ten. I don't trust the SEC yet. Obviously, I think LSU definitely could be the one SEC team. I hate to say that because I do like the Bonnies. That could go through. And I think a lot of people also think LSU can make a big run if they do get past this game. Again, they do have to get past a tough game. This could, I don't know who they play next, but the next game for them could be even tougher than this one. But yeah, I would say Tennessee not even really showing up. That was kind of a, a little bit of a pathetic effort from their part. So yeah, I'd say that was probably the biggest shock to me because they just got blown out. They were never even in the game. And then obviously the Oral Roberts was spectacular. But again, Ohio State could hit that three at the end of the game. And they're probably still going through. So, so Frank, other than Ohio State, and what you know, Dan obviously mentions a few other games there. But, but other than Ohio State, really, what was the biggest takeaway for you? And, and being a Q's guy, I'll give you a second here. Obviously, I was thinking San Diego State was going to, you know, beat them yesterday, and it came down to again. I told you, if Syracuse plays their best game, if they shoot the ball, and really, when I say if they shoot the ball, it's really if Buddy shoots the ball well, they'll win the ball game. Syracuse kind of surprised me yesterday, and, and kind of before I even let you go because i would like to say i apologize to both you guys because i underestimated I as well. the shooting ability of uh you know, syracuse Beheim. and really a buddy Beheim. they made a ton of threes and if they play that well throughout the course of the tournament they can make a run but it's going to be very very difficult to continue shooting at that rate and, and, and to continue to play defense at that rate I don't know. As you get, as you start playing better and better competition, it's going to be hard, I think, uh, for them to continue uh, down the stretch. But I was impressed. And I, I think getting a win in the tournament is a win for Syracuse this year, especially in the year of COVID and in the year that a lot of people were talking about them not even making the tournament potentially. Yeah, no, I agree. And again, we'll get into Syracuse in a little bit. But talking about the game that I think was sort of a back a bracket buster would be North Texas beating Purdue. I think that a lot of people like the size of Purdue and, again, a pretty favorable matchup if they were to move on, I think, in Villanova. They looked pretty good last night against Winthrop, but this was a game that I feel like a lot of people took uh, without Colin Gillespie, obviously not the same team. So I feel like a lot of people had uh, Purdue going on to the Sweet 16. So for me, that was a a bracket buster, and obviously I didn't have North Texas, but pretty sure I had them going to the Sweet 16 in just about every bracket. So that was a little bit of a surprise to me. Yeah, I mean, Purdue is a team that I had going pretty deep as well. My bracket got busted pretty early on, which is fine because now I could sit back, relax, and enjoy these games and talk to everyone out there. My bracket got busted uh, pretty much because I had Ohio State and Purdue on that side. And I know a lot of analysts, actually, I was looking at the CBS crew uh, who's really covering March Madness, and I saw how many people had Purdue, had uh, Ohio Ohio State, State. not only winning one game, winning two, three, four, five. So definitely tough. So So Andy, what what is the biggest – you know, storyline or, or biggest takeaway from yesterday, other than the Ohio State storyline uh, and, and even the Purdue storyline, what's the biggest takeaway you're taking from day one of March Madness? I think it's how poorly some of the Power Five conferences played. I mean, I think the ACC besides Syracuse lost every other game. Virginia Tech, UNC, Georgia Tech. Uh, I might be Virginia Tech. Did I say them first already? Too? Yeah, yeah, Virginia Tech. Yeah, Virginia Tech. yeah so I mean, the three or four teams went down the ACC besides Syracuse. We're going to see what Virginia does today. Conference. Maybe not being as strong as we think in the Big Ten, losing a lot of their big time teams. I mean, we saw Michigan State go down in the first four, and then we saw Ohio State yesterday, Purdue going down. Those are a couple of the big dogs. So, I mean, Rutgers was kind of the crown jewel last night. They were the only one to get the victory there. So it was a little weird to see some of these Power Five schools going down early. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you say like the ACC, like the one team, I don't even want to say it was a surprise because I I knew it was going to happen. I think we all knew it was going to happen, but we went against that. And we all took UNC last night, and we saw how that went. But I'm not surprised because, again, UNC has looked great, and they've also looked like shit. So at the same time, they could have – I think if they show up that game, a lot of people said they would give Baylor a time. Obviously, the way they looked last night, they're not going to give anybody a game. But I wasn't surprised whatsoever with UNC. I think the team was kind of a letdown this year for the most part. But, yeah, the ACC, really, all you have left now, Virginia's got to make a run, and that's another team – Everyone's talking highly, highly of this Ohio team. Well, hold on, hold on. You got two of the best. You got the oh, two, I agree. You got, you got the two best teams this season in the ACC left. You got Florida State and you got Virginia. And you got I'll, I'll give Virginia. I'll give Q's. I'll give Q's a little credit in there. Uh, okay. Give Q's a yeah, little I'll credit. give Q's credit, but but there's a big step down, and, and I think you guys can at least be be uh, you know say it at least is there's a pretty big step down from Florida State and Virginia, maybe to Syracuse. But I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Um, I mean, you saw what Virginia and Syracuse did on a neutral court. There wasn't too much of a big step down a couple weeks ago when Syracuse found its rotation and kind of found the success that they've had in the past couple weeks of the season, beating a UNC, beating a Clemson, beating NC State in the AC tournament, three-point game, losing on a buzzer beater, dominating San Diego State last night. 
So the combinations that they found, yeah, they've shown that they've been capable of hanging with some of the better teams and high, higher levels competition in the ACC. So I wouldn't say it's a major step down, but I would say Florida State's definitely bubbles. We never got a chance to see what we had against them this year. Got canceled because of COVID that game in particular. So we never really got a chance to see what we had against them, a team like that. Yeah, absolutely. So giving you guys a quick check in here uh, at this ball game, we got St. Bonaventure's 4-2, to very low scoring game. We're six minutes in. Uh, and again, I can't believe how little amount of points we've seen throughout the course of this tournament. Yeah, it's bad. Um, but this is just no yeah. one's making shots. It's not they're, they're not getting open looks. No one's just making yeah. shots, which could be the neutral floor. It could be a lot of things. But just I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, four two six minutes into the game is 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 significant. I, and also, yeah, I mean LSU. We talked so highly about, like Andy said, they're so offensively powered. So I don't yeah, want to say it. They're still in the game. And yeah, it, that's bad. what I mean. It like, might be a I, bad sign for the right. Bodies. Like that kind of worries me a little bit, to be honest with you. But again, a Bonaventure team that does that does play decent. Yeah, they do. They're playing good defense. They just got to start hitting a couple of shots. But like you said, unfortunately, LSU will start concern- scoring. What was concerning about? Bonaventure? No, no. I'm just saying that LSU at some point they're going to start making shots, and we're only up two. It's the same. It's the same. No, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Too. It's definitely the same. I've just never seen so many misses before. Yeah, but both teams are missing shots. We made two free throws. I think we only have one. Uh, there's only been two field goals made the entire yeah, game so far. I was about to say both. Teams oh, that's what I mean. LSU's been field. missing shots like that. I mean, it's a pretty in rhythm, wide open. Shot. I think we got it. Someone well, who's first to ten? LSU or St. Bonaventure? Uh, uh, St. Bonaventure. Ooh. Yeah. I mean that's two threes for the Bonnies. All right, well, well, all right. So everyone's on the Bonnies. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna fade it. I'm going LSU I mean, to ten first. I was gonna say I, LSU to ten first. All right. So we're looking for callers here. Uh, I'm gonna open up the line here one more time. So everyone out there, if you are looking to call in, we are looking to get people on air uh, to talk back and forth. The number Daniel put in the chat right now, but mm-hmm. the number is one eight hundred three eight seven six three five five. One more time. The number is one eight hundred three eight seven six three five five. We're looking for callers. I know Dylan Blackman was going to call in, and, and it would be interested to hear kind of. I heard he was in a fiery mood earlier. Yeah, so. he's irate right now. So, Dill, if you want to call in first, I think that'll be uh, a fair start. Good way to start it off. 1 800. Here we go. That wasn't goaltending. And I believe we have our first caller, Dylan. What's going on? Hey, buddy. How's it going? <laughs> hey, I heard, I heard you're in a fiery mood this morning. What's wrong? What'd you say? I heard you're in a fiery mood this morning. What's going on? I, I, Georgetown is upsetting me. That dude, they're pathetic. I, I said it too. They, when they, Patrick Ewing, get him out. He doesn't belong in another MSG. He's not. He's never welcome back. Fuck that guy. I, I would have to agree with you. I think right now all we know is that Pat Ewing, if he's at MSG, he's a lock. Other than that, he can't win anywhere. And I listen. I said it from the beginning. Bringing the Big East Trophy to the tournament. Might have been the biggest mistake they could have done. It just yeah, looked no, bad. I, I, it just I looks bad. I should have known that. Should have bet Colorado of the entire bankroll, put the stimulus check on it, everything on Colorado. They Fuck look good. Georgetown. They look good. Well, they you look know, very good. You know what made me nervous going into this game? And I and I was on Colorado as well uh, uh, in my bracket. But um, what I will say is what, the one thing that was made me nervous about it was as I was watching pregame today and people were talking about it on the radio and talking about it on ESPN and talking about it on Fox and wherever you get your sports news, everyone, all these analysts were all over Colorado, which always makes me nervous because I always think it's going to pop back the other way. So we see Colorado get the win, which is huge. Yeah, no, not not huge for me. Not good <laughs> betting-wise, not good bracket-wise. Fuck Colorado. So, so Dill, Quick question. What do you got tonight in the uh, UConn game? I know we're going live, and again, I'll, I'll do the quick announcement here. We are going live tonight for the UConn uh, game at, I believe, what's, what time is that game? 7 10. 7 10. It might be a little bit delayed uh, based on you know whatever happens earlier in the day, but 7 10, we're going to go live for the UConn matchup against Maryland. So, uh, Dill, quickly on air, you know, throw out your pick for, for what you got in that game. So I know UConn is is a great pick. I know since they got I forget the kid's name, but since oh, they got nice. the kid back, yeah, he they they've been unreal. But the Terps, I've I've watched a lot, I've watched a lot of games from them. Maryland is the real deal. I got Maryland. Oh, oh, they could though. be they could be the dark horse of the Big Ten because right now I, I'm, not I, inv- I'm not convinced I with the do, Big Ten yet. I do I do think they got the Big Ten has some. You know, you got you got Blow Bob Oral Roberts. And you got North Texas is just unstoppable. I know my fair share about North Texas. They're they're beating Villanova. They were beating Winthrop. They were beating whoever they were playing. North Texas is the real deal. And then Blow Bob, you know, they always get one. 
And, uh, you know, Big Ten, you know, Maryland is the real deal. And, and rumor has it, too, that did you have a 98% bracket last night? Yeah, we did. We, we moved down to like 97, I think. But, oh, you know, wow. we're, still, we're still in it. We lost two, two Sweet 16 teams, but, you know, we're still in it. Uh, Rutgers, another Sweet 16 team I got. Huge. Huge win last night, and and you know we're ready for Houston tomorrow. Definitely, definitely, should be definitely. It's going to be an interesting next couple of days. I mean, I hope your bracket Thanks. stays high up there, and I hope you win some money off that. But we got a long way to go, Dill. So, so Dill, we do. We do. And we every, do. everyone kind of here, I kind of want to get their take. But Dill, while you're on air, uh, I'm going to throw the question out to you. We saw Ohio State take. I mean, get get you know lose a close one and get blown out. Uh, you know, blown out of the tournament early here. I mean. They lose it by three, but they're gone. They're going home. And, and, and a lot of people had Ohio State not only winning the first round, but going deep in the tournament. My question is, what is today's upset? Who is who is the upset of the day? I I got Ohio over Virginia, no doubt in my mind. <laughs> Love it. Ohio over Virginia. I like the points. I like the points. But I don't you, know if they're not, gonna... not even the points. Throw in the money line. Interesting. Virginia are frauds. Interesting. Frauds. Well, well, they can't score the basketball. When I got it, we got to see when that game's on. You're gonna have to call back later, and we're they gonna do, have to see what do, happens. The problem with Virginia is they do a lot of the little things right, which I like. They make like I they, said, they no, they do, they do, and and you know, great historical program. You know, they won the last March Madness tournament, or right, that was the last. Yeah, year, it was I think. the last one. Uh, uh, okay, oh, yeah, man. yeah, a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, great historical program, great team, just too defensively oriented for me. I, I want my points. I want. I don't think they can stand with all of the points that are being scored. And you know, I just got Ohio. Absolutely. I think that'll be the big one today. And you know, you never know. Iona, Ricky P. Come on now. I agree with that as well. Well, with the uh, uh, Iona, and again for vi- uh, people out there that are seeing the live stream uh, on on YouTube, we apologize. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. We're going to get the video back up in the next second. I'm actually going to hop off and try to get that figured out. Um, but but Dill. Do you think, honestly, speaking of Iona and speaking of you know that game specifically, do you think Rick Pitino and, and, and his coaching has any any chance of getting a win today? I think that the only chance that they win is because of Rick Pitino. I don't I, like Iowa is one of the juggernauts of the tournament. I, Iowa is the best two seed, I think, in in my eyes. Iowa's best two seed. I, I would agree. And, with that. I think there's one juggernaut. It's Luca Garza. That's yeah. the juggernaut. Yeah, they they are they are the best two seed, and you know it's going to take a lot, but the coaching is going to do it. That's that's about it. That's, I don't think they have the talent to beat them. I think the coaching is going to beat them. Interesting, interesting. All right, well, Dell, listen, you got a lot of upsets, and again, we are going live again at seven ten for that game, and I don't know what time those other games on, but I believe they are during the day. So for the most part, I think we're going to go back live later. But, Dill, you're going to have to call back because you got a lot of upsets and there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to be very, very happy with your picks or very, very pissed with your picks. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll probably be sad. Yeah, so appreciate the call, Dill. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and uh, hopefully we we'll get a call back later, all right? Thanks, yeah, man. absolutely. Love you, boys. All right, thanks, man. I always Love appreciate you, it. Have a good one. You too, Talk man. To you soon, brother. Yeah, and that was Dylan. I th- oh, the live stream is back up. We are back live. Matt fix it. Uh, apologize for the volume. Sorry about that. Um, our, our feed went down. That's on me. Uh, but anyway, it's back up and running. And and Dill kind of touched on a perfect. He touched on a few points there, which which came down to, you know, Iona uh, being a team that creeps into the tournament. This is a team that again is in the national spotlight because you get a guy like Rick Pitino. And, and my question, I guess, to Frank will be, do you think we see an upset tonight? Do you think there's any opportunity for an Alabama team? Because like we said earlier, a lot of these power four conferences, power, you know, top conferences in in, in the country are, are struggling in this tournament. So I think that we saw that, and we've talked about it a little bit, that Alabama, again, has solidified themselves at the top of that SEC uh, conference. And I think that, the way that they're playing right now, I think that it would be difficult to find a situation in which Ione is able to get it. But again, uh, a good program over the past couple of years uh, were bound for the tournament last year. And I think we're in it the year before as well. But I honestly can't say that I've seen a ton uh, for this team. But I, I really think that Alabama is a strong team. Yeah, I think they are too. I think the one thing that you really got to worry about as much as I want to root for Rick Pitino, I think it's crazy. It's the fifth college team that he's brought to the March Madness tournament which is crazy in general, but I'll be honest with you. Iona in the Mac, I did go to Fairfield and that's who they beat in the final. 
Iona wins the Mac about every year. So I'm not saying that there's not great competition, but Rick Bettina or not, again, credit to him. With him in the Mac, they were a lock to win it, but they were probably going to do it either way. The one thing I'm worried about with Bama, they like to play fast. They shoot the three like no one really else in the country. So they could put up 100 points on Iona today. I wouldn't really be surprised about that. Well, you're, you're talking about 100 points. We got 15 total points in this game. <laughs> we're a quarter of the way done with the game. We're 10 minutes to go here in the first half. Scores 8-7. to seven. St. Bonaventure with the early lead. Not really even uh, a great game to watch. It's kind of been a slow game back and forth. Three-pointer up, no good. Currently, like I said, a one-point lead for, for the Bonnies. And so, Andy, earlier in the year, you were talking about how much you like St. Bonaventure. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I know you bet on them a few times throughout the course of the season. Why, why do you go away from them in this moment? Uh, and, and, you know, talking about LSU, yes, they've been hot. But when you're talking about a team that played as many games in their tournament as they did, and also the, against that competition, St. Bonaventure had a First much to easier 10. tournament. Yeah. Much easier tournament. So playing those many that many games back to back to back against great competition, and then all of a sudden going and playing here in this moment, it's kind of tough for a team like LSU. Yeah, I mean, as a three seed in their conference tournament, they did get the double bye. So they were already in the quarterfinals. So they only did have to play three games. Yes, it was three games in three days. But it's obviously not exactly how they, they've had time off. I mean, it's been a week since it was the game on Sunday. So they, they've had plenty of time to rest. I just think I do. I Don't get me wrong. I love the Bonnie team. I think they have a great starting five. They're all juniors, actually. So they're all going to be back next year unless they're one of them going to the draft, which I don't think any of them are that good or good enough to be in the NBA yet at this point. But I just think that with a three-headed monster, they have Cam Thomas, Javante Smart, and Trenton Watford. As much as of a good defensive team as the Bonnies are, I just don't think this was a very like good matchup for them matchup-wise. With those stars being able to take over and get buckets, I just don't think the Bonnies are very offensively talented. Like we've been talking in the A-10, they've been able to stifle teams with their defense because those teams aren't exactly as gifted on the offensive end like a team like LSU, who has three guys that can fill up the bucket like we saw in the SEC tournament. So that's why I liked LSU. So not to catch you off here, but we do have a caller here calling in line one. So let's see who this is. Hello, you're on the pick vault. Oh, hold on one second. Let me get the – again, we're having a little bit – here we go. Hello, you're on the pick oh, vault. Can you hear me? Sorry, sorry. Can you start oh, over? Please. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm on the pick vault. Yeah, what's going on? That's good, man. I can't hear anyone speaking, so – but yeah, fuck. Well, that, like, that, oh, well. Manzi, Manzi, I can hear you now. Is that you? Yeah, it might be me. How, how we doing, bud? Uh, well, I'll give you the situation right now. I'm fucking. I just pulled out a mimosa tower. I'm in a bathroom stall. I uh, may, or not, may or may not be taking a shit right now, but I figured I'd call in. Uh, give you some insight on uh, <laughs> what I feel about it. Uh, it just keeps going. All right, now. I'll just I don't pop know, yeah. outside. God fucking damn it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not because it's of not you. I, it's I not you. It no, it's, it's not because of you. It's because of us. It's not. It's not you as me. It's the typical. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, know, I know. I know it's a little cliche, Manzi, but it's always you. Yeah, you know, it's all right. So, so, so you took down you, you but, uh, took down a mimosa tower. You know, who you got in this game? Are you watching the Bonnies versus LSU? Uh, so I actually have a position on LSU money line right now. I kind of had a little. Uh, conversation with a couple friends and like we you know whatever it's like LSU like sometimes you just gotta like just like under like what's there, like you gotta ride with so, the boys like, sometimes, sometimes you you. what's that is it sometimes you just gotta ride with the boys you said you had LSU right yeah I went LSU that's uh I like that's, that's the thing like I've seen like the bodies enough where I know it's like all right like the bodies of the bodies like they'll see what they gotta do like an okay mid table team, but like they'll never like be this high. Like I don't think like when it comes to like the brackets that like the uh, they kind of fucked up on like a couple of things. I think that's like one of the games that like they messed up on. Like listen, like I'm not no like pick expert or anything like that. I'm just going to salt my gut here, and it's just like listen, where they I mess up. Ah, uh, well, I mean one. Clemson, like Clemson Rutgers. I agree with that. Everyone fucking knew that Clemson Rutgers, like Rutgers, should have been the better team there. They should have been seated higher. I don't Absolutely. understand why the fuck they uh, went there. Um, but like you know, it's just like even with other stuff. Like you look at like 
a little bit like the UC Santa Barbara game, but you know, my stance is that I took a uh, UC Santa Barbara like right away, like um, plus seven and a half, and I had their money line as well. That might be my uh, my big game too. I might actually just throw a hundred spot like I did on Q's. I little had a had a little bit of post nut clarity last night, and that's when I uh, <laughs> said, "Fuck it, Q's hundred bucks." Here we go. So, and, so you, you bet know, on Syracuse. So. He's, he's a Syracuse. You bet on Syracuse last night as well. I was see. I was all over um, San Diego State. I thought they were going to show up, and they just didn't at all. And Syracuse, pretty much, like I said, they made their threes, and, and they made it almost impossible. And, and that three, when you're playing that two three zone. If a team like San Diego State, who, who normally shoots the ball well, if they're not making their threes, the game's over, and that's kind of what we saw early and often. No, um, and that's the thing. Like, and that's what I like don't like about like the college basketball game. Like, a lot of them have a lot of these teams have been influenced by the NBA, and like, yeah, if you can't make your shots, you're not going to win. Like, and that's like actually kind of pisses me off a little bit about Ohio State because like that game was like an opposite of like everything that happened. It's like Ohio State, a very good team, team big team. Big Ten teams always historically very good paint teams. They get they get to the rack. You get your two points and whatever. But like that being said, like you run into a team like Oral Roberts, like shoot lights out. There it is. Like you don't have a response to it. And that's why I love Mark Madness. Because it's like every given day you can have these teams just like here I go. I'll pull out of it and boom, bang. And then like you know, next thing you know, you have an upset like that. Which I love the upset, but I also took. Uh, Ohio State live at minus six and a half, and that was like probably my only shit bet of the day. So, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. You move on. Like, yeah, I mean, that was definitely a tough from one there. Yeah. Hey, so are you going back and having yeah. another Mimosa Tower? Is that is that what I've heard? Is the game plan here? Yeah, that's definitely the game plan. I'm probably like bring down another Mimosa Tower. I took a couple. Uh, I took this one hockey parlay that I think I like today, mostly just because, like, I guess kind of like getting into it. Fuck it, whatever. Um, I took a couple money lines and I'll took a uh, plus one and a half. So the money line that the money lines that I took were the Hurricanes money line. I like that. Um, yeah, and I mean, I just it's one of those things that I think the Blue Jackets are just a really fucking shitty team. My like, Scorarella doesn't have. I was gonna say the coaching isn't He's there. Get fired. Disaster. Yeah, so, yeah, and I mean, like the stat show. It's just like the Hurricanes are in the top ten when it comes to the top ten when it comes to like your big major advanced stats, your XGF your rate of shots, your differentials on your rate of shots and so on and so forth. Like you just look at those guys and you're like, yeah, like they're rightly priced where they're at at like whatever it is, like minus like 220 or something like that. Wow, so like up hurricanes are in this far away. Yeah. So like hurricanes are in it. Um, I'm going off memory here. I don't actually have uh, things on my stuff. <laughs> I, but like I think you said another, uh, plus. Could... I can read it out loud too. You sent it to me. Hold on. Yeah, read that out loud if you can. Mm-hmm. You have Hurricanes money line. You got it at minus one ninety three. You have the Islanders at minus one forty tonight. Ooh, I'll be honest. I'm I'm on the Flyers. If I had a value play today, I think it's the Flyers. He's no, a big, and he's I, a big Islanders like a fan. Fair so enough. That might be a bias. He's from Long Fair Island, enough. so. And then you have no, and that's like the thing. There is a yeah. Continue, Manzi. Finish that sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there is a bias there, but like, keep going. Uh, and then you have the wild plus one and a half. Dan's a huge wild I'm guy. I'm a big so, wild guy. So, so what? what do you, yeah. why, why the wild, uh, Manzi? Fill us in on why the wild. So I think like I think I get I think at the end of the day, like Ruth Bauer's a good goaltender, but like, and I mean the wild. I think the I think the wild. I think the Avalanche are probably and should be the favorite to win the cup. I don't. I don't think like I don't understand um, why they don't. They just have a they just have a complete team back and forth like. Your first line's fantastic. Your second line, you know, is built well. Like, you have, like, front to bottom a great team, but also, like, you have defense to the pole. So, like, team-wise, they're there. I just think, like, if they have that kid meet in, it's just, like, cricket. I would even put the wild, wild money line on I was going to say, like, I would probably go wild money line. I think there's a lot of, lot of potential in the wild this year. Definitely a team that no one thinks about because, again, you got to remember, Minnesota is like the capital of hockey. So they're going to have talent. That kid Kripsoff or whatever his name is, he's an absolute beast. So oh, yeah. I like your parlay, to be honest with you. The only thing I one would say too, would be like actually. the Islanders. He has the Florida Panthers as well. That's yeah. Like so like, minus 210 money line. Yeah. And that's like another and that's like another play there. I uh, just like the Predators are a bad team. Too. And it's like, yeah, like some of the stats show that they're a little bit better than I was going to say. I'll be completely before before we cut off the hockey talk. I'll say one last thing about that. That parlay, I would say that the Florida Panthers 
are a team that plays a little bit, little bit down to their competition. So I know the Predators and the Predators when the Predators play a good team, look for them to come out hot. But I agree, I don't think the Predators are that good like they used to be. So I wish you the best of luck in the parlay no, like, and the rest of your Mimosa Tower. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy the Mimosa Tower, and hopefully that parlay hits. We're happy you called in. And, uh, again, we hope to have you on later again tonight. We're going live during the UConn versus Maryland game. Uh, and before you hop off, I'll ask it your way. Who you got in, in St. Bonaventure, LSU? And then one more time, who you taking tonight in UConn, Maryland? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, definitely LSU money line. I'm on that. And, like, that's the thing. I am kind of split on uh, the uh, Maryland uh, UConn game, but like out of uh, out of respect for uh, the Big East and the old Big East, I am going for uh, Maryland because fuck UConn. Have a good day, guys. Suck a you, dick, man. You what the too, hell? Man. Enjoy, hey, enjoy your Mimosa Tower. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> All right, it was a good caller again. Go call again. But here we are. We're watching uh, LSU St. Bonaventure's 21-12. Five minutes to go here. Uh, you know, LSU out to this early lead, and, and they're on a pretty big run here. It was 10-2, and I believe it's now – hold on, they're about to score. Oh, block. Bonnie's not looking yeah, I think, too good. I think it's 12-4 run right now currently, So, it's, or maybe even a 16-4 run. Yeah, what a nightmare. Second, Dan, this is kind of what I was referencing, though, what like, kind of scared me about them. They struggle to score offensively sometimes. When they meet teams that they have good matches, I, I've bet on them once or twice as well. Well, more than once or twice where they've been. They only lost four games all year, and I was a part of one or two of those losses. And those were games where they didn't even crack 60 points. And I don't think you're going to win a game against LSU if you can't crack 60 points. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I'm, I, I think there's – obviously, there's still a lot of time left. I'm Absolutely. hoping I'm hoping, the, I'm hoping the Bonnies get a little hot. But all in all, I think both of these teams haven't even played to their full potential yet. So yeah. I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping there's going to be a better second half. Because I think this Bonaventure team, they look a little gassed. I think everyone looks a little tired, to be honest with you. I, I would say for your guys, like for you guys having the Bonaventures and wanting them to win, that you would want Watford and Smart both have two fouls. I believe that's two of the three best players. So they've been sitting on the bench for a lot of the half, too. They haven't even played, honestly, a ton. So maybe them getting in foul trouble could be a big storyline down the rest of this way. Definitely, definitely. I hope so. And another game, obviously, Georgetown, Colorado, almost done. Colorado up almost 20. Well, I want to take a second. I know to talk about they're up 21 now with one minute remaining, but I want to take a second to talk. I know you're looking at the top of the screen mm-hmm. right then, but I want to take a second to talk about the next game over there, which is Kansas versus Eastern Washington. Now, Kansas is number three seed in the tournament and one of those teams that everyone kind of, I believe, pretty much was on in the first round here, at least up here. Uh, a lot of people have been on Kansas for the most part. But my question your way is, Currently, they trail by eight points at half. Is there any chance Kansas loses this game? And, and this was something that I was worried about before going into the game. I said, the U.S. like Kansas is the team that I could see blowing it today. They could be that upset uh, oh, that, yeah. we, that we talked about earlier. No, you got it. You got it. No, you can hit it. Down. No, 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 it's all, it's all, no. You got it. You got it. I, I was just going to say, listen, this is what I was afraid of. This is a similar situation to Virginia later tonight. Coming off COVID, you, don't, you just don't know what kind of shape they're in. They haven't practiced a ton been together as a team so you just don't know how preparations are going you can have as many virtual meetings and stuff as you want but how much is that stuff clicking versus actually being on the court and practicing it versus watching the film and not being together as a full team so i just think i think like that obviously it's the first half this could be a game where they were kind of a little rusty and they were getting it together on the court and i mean they gave up 46 in the first half to eastern washington that's not a normal scoreline yeah for a Kansas agree. team down the stretch, their calling card was their defense. That's how they got to a three seed in this tournament and became one of the better teams in the country again. I mean, they were out of the top 25 at one point in the middle of about February, early February, and then they went on a massive win streak and almost won the Big 12 tournament, but sadly had a COVID positive and had to be taken out. And now here they are as a three seed. So I think they can bounce back and they've got this game still. I wouldn't be too worried just yet. I'm hoping they bounce. Obviously, I hope they bounce back. But yeah, I think they definitely have the capability. You're telling me that Eastern Washington – is a better team than Kansas. I just don't see it. But like you said, Matt, Kansas is definitely a team that we've seen choke, whether it's in their own conference, big games, it doesn't really matter. We saw them against Texas. I, did they actually have the beating Texas? Did that? Barely, I think, yeah, during the season. They but that, again, that was barely, I think, mo- out of a four-game, three-game set, I think Texas probably takes it over. And Kansas is just a team. You don't know who's going to show up. I know, like you said, Andy, COVID. McCormick did have COVID, and that was probably the best piece to winning that game. So, like you said, he probably is gassed. So it should be interesting second half. I'm kind of looking at the live line for that, though. Because right now, I mean, Kansas, you'd think they should come back, right? I, I would think that they'd at least win. I don't think they're covering. I believe the spread was like, what, 10, 9? Yeah, I would say, yeah, it was like 10 and a half. I know Pickball did have Eastern Washington plus 10 and a half. Kansas 
winning outright, but shout out Charlie Disturco. I did apparently see your action network that you had a little uh, money line play on them, and you also had them on the spread. So I also like that Shoeless Patrillo is back. That is what he wrote in the chat. Shoeless. So yeah, everyone's talking in the chat here. If you guys do want to call in, we are looking for callers, or will you guys just message right in the chat and ask us questions because we are looking to take questions uh, on air and obviously hang out with us throughout the day. But we're going to go live again, like I said, during the UConn Maryland game. And we're following all of March Madness. Uh, I kind of want to take a second, Dan, if you could pull up on your screen um, the pick vault picks of the day. Can you, can you log into the pick vault on the website? So everyone out there, if you haven't uh, checked out the pick vault mobile site, go to www.thepickvault.com right now and subscribe or go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the mobile app right now. So again, Unlock your money. So Dan's going to pull up the picks. I kind of want to go through uh, the games for the day. So hold on. I'm going to flip over. Here we go. And not to interrupt you, I just see I'm Mike, one it. of my boys, asked. He asked us about Oklahoma, Missouri tonight and just our thoughts. He wrote this in the chat earlier. I'm not sure if he's still watching. But just I know, Matt, you like Missouri tonight. I believe I like Missouri. I think we're all on Missouri now. After uh, one of the guards, Harmon, has COVID now, one of the main guards. Not Reeves, the main scorer, but the next one. Uh is out tonight. So I think that is why the line has changed a little bit. They opened as a favorite. Now they are a dog. And I think I'm going to have to roll with Missouri in that case. If Harmon's out, I would have taken Oklahoma if he was healthy. Yeah, I agree with you there, Andy. And again, uh, thank you to Charlie. Saw a little bit of a lean there with Mizzou giving us the info there. And I think that is uh, important uh, to know and to be able to see and, and recognize that. Cause I think it is a, a big change for uh, the team overall for Oklahoma that is yeah absolutely and I mean I think changing that up with him not being there and having to play someone else off the bench and I just think he's an important part I mean he can't he comes in he wears that number 11 people were comparing him a little bit almost to being the next Trey Young kind of for that program and he hasn't really blossomed into that guy yet obviously because obviously you'd see him all over sports center know exactly who he is right he'd be considered the best player on the team which he's currently not but he's a really good player for them he's a solid second option on the offensive end and not having him today, I think, could be a big factor against a guy like Drew Smith, who was one of the best players in the AC, uh, not the AC, sorry, the SEC all year for the Tigers uh, down in Missouri. Perfect. Yeah. Now, so we're going to go through these games. Uh, and sorry, Dan and I were kind of uh, talking over here, but um, I didn't really hear what what exactly you guys. Uh, oh, the, the question one of my friends asked. I don't know if he was still watching. He had asked what our thoughts were today on Oklahoma Missouri game. Oklahoma plus one person. Yeah, think I'm all over. I'm all over Missouri, uh, and I, you know. Honestly, don't even go with me. I, I I would follow the pick vault here, and I'm going to pull that one up in a second. But, you know, I, I've been so off about everything. My gut tells me Missouri because I've watched uh, Oklahoma just miss free throws uh, down the stretch in games. And I actually bet on Oklahoma earlier this season and watched them dwindle away and lose two games to unranked teams back-to-back -back early in the year, which I bet on them back-to-back -back nights or, or two out of three nights. I believe they played uh, two out of three nights in a row. And I bet on them both times, and they ended up losing both times, which – really sucked uh and, and obviously that's something that you know sticks in the better's mind and uh, and sticks in the back there and so I, I i'm trying to stay away as much as possible from oklahoma i just don't trust them down the stretch i haven't seen much of missouri though I, have you seen missouri I, I, i've seen a decent amount one of their guards drew smith an electric guy i mean he was sec player of the week a couple times um he was one of the nominees for player of the year uh he averages almost close to i believe 20 points a game so i mean with him out there that's a great guard matchup they have with him and Reeves. I mean, Reeves is an awesome guard for Oklahoma. And Harmon being out with COVID, I think, helps that because now you can lock in to shutting down Reeves and not having to worry about another electric guy, a one-two punch kind of guard combination, getting on the scoreboard together. Absolutely. And then for everyone out there that isn't on the Pick Vault mobile app, I'm just going to pull up the Pick Vault app here, uh, actually the website, www.thepickvault.com. This is the Pick Vault pick of the day, and it's on the Pick Vault website, so you guys can see what that looks like right now just an update to lsu is up 9 27 to 18 with 238 left in the first half and we have florida state up 47 to 38 in the second half with about nine minutes left but uncg has been trying to make a run and battle back as they hit a three to take the deficit down to six 47 to 41 florida state Absolutely. And so looking at this Oklahoma versus Missouri game, the pick has it in a very close game, 70.6 to 70.1. Again, very, very close. A lot of these games in the tournament, I know, Frank, we talked about it before we even uh, games came down to like the last minute or so. Mm -hmm. Most of the games came down to the last minute or so, which is huge in a tournament like this. So, 
you know, in a close game tonight, uh, you know, who do you got, Oklahoma or Missouri? So I have Missouri as well. I think that this was a little bit of a, of a squad play, maybe just a, a revelation this morning after uh, some of the games that uh, went on yesterday. But again, to get to your point of how close all these games are, I think that I go back and forth and in my head, I'm like, how do these, you know, the, the line makers feel about these teams and these games having seen uh, different sample sizes of different sorts from different teams, um, I guess, depending on conference and, and sort of their availability with COVID and things like that. But I mean, they, I mean, they, we just goes back to the fact that Vegas sort of always knows and it's incredible how close everything really is making it scary to, to take spreads because it's, you know, been really interesting in terms of who's been winning. And, and honestly, most of the, the games haven't, uh, been like too much of a blowout. I mean, even yesterday we talked about it. All the games at the beginning were super close. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And, and and so Andy, kind of same question your way. When it comes down to a one possession game, uh, do you have any lean? Do you like favorites or underdogs? Do you like the momentum? I mean, what what is it go to, especially as it pertains to like live betting? Because mm -hmm. a lot of these games throughout the course of the tournament, Kansas was a perfect live bet at halftime. Uh, now only down six with 19 to go in the ball game. They cut the lead uh, from eight to six just to start. I mean, not a big difference, uh, just one basket. But that right there even makes it a two possession game. And I like Kansas uh, to come back and win that one. But, you know, we're talking about live betting in a tournament like this. What is your go to strategy? I know we've talked about different things yeah. uh, down the stretch. So check out what is your strategy? I would say my strategy is sometimes I just like to watch the games. Obviously, it's tough because if a team like LSU, this game was close in the beginning. No one was scoring and you didn't like the way they were looking. You might not want to fly at LSU and then all of a sudden they go on a run, hit a couple threes, hit a couple shots and now they're up nine. So it sometimes it's got to be tough. You have to be smart though. Don't force it. Don't just throw it because you want to play or you're trying to, you know, get back in the week or make that money back. It's, it's about being smart. It's a long-term game. It's not about rushing and kind of jumping in to the live betting because everyone else has the better you need something down be smart about it and find something good i like honestly riding teams like matt mentioned with momentum obviously at the end of the game if a team makes a bit of a comeback if i'm going to try to hit someone live i'm probably hitting the team that's making the comeback live even if they don't have the ball personally absolutely and i mean i just think it it it, it really it, re it really depends i mean obviously if we're talking about the team that's on the run and it's like we're watching, I don't know, a 16 seed versus a one. I'm probably not live betting the 16 seed, honestly. Like, I would probably still take the one seed at that point. I guess it's just time and situation and kind of the teams that are playing. Like, if LeBron James is on the court, I'm probably live betting him, and I'm not live betting the Pistons if it's a tie game and someone's getting a game-winning jumper potentially on the Pistons. Don't even get me started about the NBA. If anything, you should be betting. Honestly, it is funny. We talk about it a lot I'm earlier, at least. For everyone out there that's watching March Madness, the NIT tournament is also going on. And there's some free money out there in the NIT. There's some tournament. really good games there, honestly, too. But free money, too. I agree. But, but I mean, nothing's free because we obviously see how this tournament goes. But I agree watching just live betting. I feel like March Madness in general, because, again, like I'll be completely honest with you. How much have I seen of St. Bonaventure? I've seen some stuff, but also like there's a lot of teams out there. I've seen nothing of like a North Texas, even an Earl Roberts. You know, all anyone really talks about, everyone just looks at what everyone else is talking about. And that's where they get their information. Oh, Oral Roberts shoots lights out and they shot lights out against Ohio State. It wouldn't surprise me if they shit the bed in the next round, whoever they play. But yeah, I think it's one of those things. You watch a team, see if they're good, see what their strengths are, and the lines are moving all the time. If you get a bet, if you know one team is better and you like them already, like Colorado was never down today. But if Colorado was down to Georgetown at some point, hopping in on Colorado is probably a good decision because if anything, you get some points back. So that's what I like doing. I just like picking the best team when they go down and hop on them, unless they just look like they don't have it. I mean, I think everyone thought Ohio State had it but they didn't and i think right now everyone probably thinks kansas has it and i'll be honest with you i would have way more faith in ohio state than i would with kansas see i don't know about that i i, I live bet ohio state yesterday when they were trailing uh and, and i would right now live bet kansas but you know i'm just staying away from everything today uh for the most part because you know it's been a tough tournament i uh, seeing favorites lose yesterday and i know the book had a good day yesterday uh vegas had a good day yesterday but you know, I want to get a few callers here. So one more time, I put the number in. I'm going to throw the number in the chat. I know I said I was going to do that before, but never did. The number is 1-800-387-6355. If you guys want to call in right now, you guys can. Uh, we're looking for callers to ask questions. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, Andy. Absolutely. Again, talk about, you know, 
one story that you, you know you've seen throughout the course of the tournament and even you know moving forward what's one thing Absolutely. you look you, you look for uh you know today even uh or moving forward you know the rest of the tournament what is the storyline that you're, you're looking to follow you know in the next few days i mean i mentioned it as one of my main storylines that i was watching in the tournament the other day but i think yesterday's was a uh, was an interesting day for kate cunningham on oklahoma state i mean we saw him struggle it was a tale of two halves the perennial number one pick struggling i want to see what happens when he has a kind of complete game i mean you were talking liberty up not not shit talking you in any form but you were talking Liberty up like they were going to win the game, potentially cover the spread, stuff like that. This guy, their best player, had a pretty bad game in Oklahoma State, still almost beat him by double digits. So I just think that means that they're a little bit of a scary team. So I'm interested to see how far this Oklahoma t- State team can get. I mean, you, you know, halfway through the game or three quarters way through the game, you looked at me like, oh, shit, Liber- Liberty might actually have this game. Liberty is going to win the game. You kept looking at me. So it, yeah, but ah. it's, yeah, but it's called a reverse jinx, Matt. You ever heard of it? Come on, jinx. bud. No, I'm giving you I'm giving you the reverse jinx. All I'm saying is that game was much closer than, than the final score. Look, they made their free throws down the stretch and they, and they ended up pulling away down the stretch because, you know, Cunningham took over that ball game. And, and so, yeah, you got to give him credit down the stretch in that game. But he played like crap the first that's what I'm saying. Against Plus, other teams, no, I'm agreeing with you. Against other teams that are better than Liberty, it's going to be hard to to, to win. So games. I'm interested to see if he shows up now, or and if maybe that was his like you know his mulligan. He yeah, better. He had a bad up. half and a half. He showed up for the last second, the second half of the second half, and he did his he did his job, and he got him through for a victory. Now I want to see he takes on an Oregon State team that's coming in on fire. I mean they've they destroyed Tennessee yesterday. That was a team that no one really, I personally didn't see it coming. I know you guys didn't see it coming really either. So what uh, Tennessee yesterday losing to 100 percent, 100 percent. One thing I did see, and, and even though I did, I, I do like Florida State in this game. I did talk about how I do think UNCG can shoot the shit out of the ball and UNCG yeah. could actually make this a very interesting game. And right now it's a three point ball game in the second half. Uh, actually, as Andy kind of mentioned, only seven minutes to go in this ball game. Forty nine, forty six. Florida State with the lead. If Florida State were to lose that, I mean, to be honest with you, Florida State were to lose that. And in the first two days of the tournament, we have Florida State, Ohio State, Tennessee, Purdue. Maybe I Kansas mean, now. And, and I mean, there's a bunch of time left. It's only seven points uh, in this one. I think there's a bunch of time left, and I would still stick with Kansas right now. But again, you're right. Kansas, if they got uh, eliminated from this tournament, all of a sudden you lose a lot of star power. And we got a lot of like double-digit seeds moving on to the tournament. I, I mean, I think at the, for the most part, it's going to be interesting because will those teams actually show up again or is it just become, is it going to become chalk after that for the most part? I think, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if, I know Dill was high on North Texas. I mean, maybe I got to watch a little bit more of North Texas. The but mean green? Def, I just think some of these teams maybe come in and just, they just play down to their opponents. And again, I think you go back to a team like, I know we always go back to, even in Oregon State, like you're going into that game playing against Tennessee, big, tough, SEC, all these schools. And all the pressure is on the top seed. I mean, there's no pressure on the other team. If anything, they're just happy they're there for the gear, the tournament, the dance. I mean, yeah, they can make a run, but there's no pressure on those kids. That's a, one of the best experiences of their lifetime. For a lot of those kids in March Madness, they're going to go ball out there, probably go right to the draft. So there's just a different, like Cade Cunningham. I'm not saying an NBA prospect's going to watch that game and be like, eh, he's not good. I still think he's super talented. Yeah, we're having a. Oh, you should be good. So yeah, I, I wouldn't say hey, he's obviously still super talented. I don't. I, he's still going to be a top pick. I don't think that at all. But he's got to show up if they want to actually do something in this tournament because that's someone that they rely on all season. And if he's not there to show up, I know they did play decent when he wasn't on the court. But in big games like this, I think you need a stud to really pull out a game for you. So without him, I think Oklahoma State is probably in big trouble. No, I I, I couldn't agree anymore. And again, I, I'm all over uh, uh, having a big player like that, like a, a Cunningham. You know, carry you in a yeah. tournament like this, uh, and I think having a guy like that does make a huge difference. One more time, I'm going to throw it out there. If you guys do want to call in or ask us questions, throw anything in the chat here. Uh, I know we have a few people going back and forth. Dale, if you have anything to throw up uh, in the chat as well, because I know you throw out a lot of stuff. I see people have thrown out Missouri Tigers. I know we talked about them earlier. Shoeless Patrillo is back. Um, Shoeless. So again, this game right now, both these games are, are going to come down to the wire, I think. Uh, and let's pull up the pickball one more time, the pickball uh, mobile app, so we can see some of these other games. One, so of, the, what, one of the other games we talked about, yeah, let, let's talk about Virginia, Ohio. Uh, I know you are all over Ohio tonight. Um, I, I, I like them to potentially pull the upset, but I like the points more if you're a betting man. Obviously, if you're listening to the show, you're a betting man or woman, so and most the pick, likely. The pickball does like the points as well. I, I, I'd probably go high with the points, but then again, it does scare me because I said yesterday, Villanova went into that game and 
You know, everyone didn't think everyone's like Winthrop, Winthrop, Winthrop. Jay Wright trashes his team on national television. They go play defense. And now everyone's talking about Ohio, but maybe no one's talking about Virginia. And they actually have, I think, better talent, at least. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I would just say, Dan, that what the difference is one had COVID, one had like an injured player. Fair. So I think fair. having COVID is very different than just losing one of your star players. You're not like necessarily not practicing and not running through schemes and staying in shape, you know, and stuff like that. So I just think it definitely that's a little bit more effective and why maybe you don't hear as or you hear a lot of the Ohio more so than their actual necessarily talent and them keeping it close. I mean, you're seeing this Kansas Eastern Washington game and same situation. Kansas had COVID sat out, no practice, not really doing much. And they're losing right now. Big spread. So might see something similar later. Definitely. I mean, it's going to be interesting. Again, I love you are all over the COVID news. I do love that you always are over the COVID news. But I get Doctor Jam. The one thing, I, the one thing I must say about Virginia, I just think that they lack guard play just a little bit from the past. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a, some guys that need to be studs. I think if Hauser shoots lights out like he probably usually does, I just know I don't know much about him. I just know there's a guard on Ohio that's Jason. A per, he's a perennial. He's like a big prospect, right? Like they say, he's like the man. Yeah, he he's pretty electric. He's good. Interesting, interesting. So I guess that's going to be fun to see. If again, maybe no one's talking about this kid. Everyone's talking about Cade Cunningham. Who knows? Maybe so, maybe Preston will be talked about. So now. the score is currently fifty six forty nine, uh, Eastern Washington with the lead, and I'm calling a ten zero run here coming from uh, Kansas. Starts there with the three pointer. I'm calling a ten zero run here. I think Kansas is about to go on a run, and they're never going to look back from that moment. So currently a three up and good, and so Kansas now only Charles fifty six fifty two, um, and so. The response and one. So there goes the 10 0 run. This kid's in. I saw this kid before. I mean, he looks like yeah, a lumberjack. He, yeah, yeah, he's getting into it over there. I keep seeing him, the, the lumberjack with the guy. I mean, I got to give these kids a lot of credit, though. Like a lot of credit. Because again, another team that goes in and you literally have nothing to lose. Go have fun. He's flexing. I mean, imagine flexing on a Kansas player as an Eastern Washington kid. Couldn't imagine that. He looks about 40 years old, though, I'll be honest with you. Tanner Groves. He's got 24 today. So he completes the three-point play, and currently Eastern Washington leads 59-52, 14-22 to go. ton of time left in that game. So let's shift our focus. I'm going to pull up the uh, Florida State game, if possible, Dan. But um, I want to shift our focus because Florida State only leads by one with five minutes, 30 seconds for, uh, to go. Andy, do you see an upset you know, happening here? I know at this point you, we've gone back and forth about UNCG. We've talked about Florida State. Yeah. We, we, we've set our piece. But do you think it's possible right now, even though it's a one-point game? I mean, I, listen, game. listen, I think it's possible, but I think that Florida State's the better team, and I think they'll fight their way through this. I don't think that they're going to let this one slip through. As much as I respect UNCG and putting up a great fight, I just don't think that they'll complete the task here. They were down big, and I think it's a lot to ask for them to pull off the major 16-point comeback. So you wouldn't get in on it then? No, I'm I'm sticking with Florida State being cool and winning the game. They should. I mean, it would be really a shame for Leonard Hamilton. I mean, after he ruptured his Achilles, unfortunately, coming off the team bus, he heading into good. Indianapolis. He does look good with he the boot on. He looks good for somebody that just ruptured his Achilles. Achilles, he does look good. How's Stan looking? Stan looked say, decent? Stan Jones is the boy, but he hasn't. Honestly, I'll be real. He, I haven't seen him at all. I really haven't seen his leg. How does his, Was he hobbling at all? He's, I don't know, he's just got he's a boot a, on. He's in a boot. Just a little bit of a boot. He, I was, mean, he was hobbling. That's up. a serious injury. Did you guys though. see Biden go down too? I mean, yeah, I in, did see in that. the same day, we got, uh, what's his name? Leonard, uh, Hamilton. Leonard Hamilton and Biden falling down, uh, you know, Biden going up the stairs and, and, and Hamilton getting off the bus. But again, <laughs> it's just interesting to see these people. Uh, <laughs> and I would say one thing: there's the boo will not stop Leonard Hamilton from like freaking out. Like he's if there they, he is, Matt, in the back top right corner. If you can see that, he's in the boot. He does look good. He's hobbling over there to the to upper the right hand line. corner. Not anymore now. Yeah, when they were having that view. I mean, this is going to come Under down to five, the wire. Should I go get my Florida State jersey on? I, I take Florida State currently fifty-one fifty. I'll say it. I'll take. Okay, I'm gonna put the line out there. See if you guys can. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll we'll live bet it together. All right, not with money, but with uh, emotional with, Mountain um, Mountain Dew cases. Yeah, I was about to say the same exact thing, Dan. Actually, make that. We can go with C four cases. C four C four. Pull one out, Danny. You drinking that? Can C4. we can, can we just do my C four? <laughs> it's the day sponsor of the pickball. So, yeah, again, going back to it, 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 currently Florida State leads 53-50, four minutes, 20 seconds to go. And if I put the line right now, I know the, the, the real line was 10 points. If I put the line at eight and a half, would you guys take Florida State minus eight and a half currently? I'm eight, all over. I'm taking eight Florida and a half. State. I take a minus 10 still. I can still I, take a minus Can I buy the eight and a half to eight and we have a deal? Deal. Deal. Uh, we'll go, we'll, minus we'll go eight. one C4 on it. I'm in. Fair. Just make sure you get me the frozen bomb skull. <laughs> 
You know, I had the cotton candy right before we hopped. No, there. dude, that stuff. Yeah, I heard stomach. you talking about that one. I you didn't like it, dude. Though, the right? powder. You know what? To be honest with you, I, I I love all the flavors of C four, but but the one. This guy looks like Zion, dude. That, he I, did look like Zion. Yeah, wait, that's so. Huh? Wait, Matt, you literally. I said that exact quote to Frank. I go, number one reminds me of Zion. Honestly. That's our boy Ray. Ray. That's our boy Ray. Raekwon Gray. He's that's sick. Our, he's he he's the reason we covered the eight. There he is, seventeen and five, Zion numbers. But yeah, no, that's C four. I don't. The I just don't. Is going I don't like the way, way the the cotton candy breaks up. I took it before the gym yesterday, and I actually thought I was gonna have a heart attack. No, oh God, I'm, I'm not even. Kansas I'm, puts up a three. Oh, oh, that could have been big. That would have been a two point, one point game. Still plenty of time left. Only four points. Yeah, game. no. But again, going back to the C four, I, I had the cotton candy yesterday for the first time, and it's ultimate uh, C four <laughs> ultimate. And to be honest with you, my stomach has never felt the same. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't feel it right. Like in all. what way? No, I just, I mean, normally I love the C four, and, and it gives me good energy once in a while, especially for a workout. But to be honest. I had it earlier before uh, I went out, and and, and I just literally the one thing I must say with you in the C four, I give you a lot of credit because again, I I'm a guy that usually we could just throw it back like almost dry scoop and throw some water in your mouth, uh. but that cotton candy doesn't break up nicely, and when you literally throw it back, I don't know, it just doesn't taste good at all. I couldn't even throw it back. You you like pour yourself a massive glass of that stuff and just threw it back in two seconds, it's gone. I didn't hop in on it though. I couldn't. Maybe later, though. Yeah, no, I don't think I would either. That's Hear me out. If Florida saying. State doesn't cover the eight, I'll take a double scoop of C4 Ultimate right, right on, now. Right on camera for everyone? Right. That'll be the two cases. Double scoop to the face. And now, right now, we're in both commercial break. There's got to be something else on that. Well, again, pull up the UConn versus Maryland game. So here on the pick ball, we Maybe are going to pull up. This is Bonaventure. No, no, no. I was asking Dan oh, to pull up on, on the, the actual pickball app. TV. So for everyone out there on the pickball app, this is actually on the pickball website, www.thepickball.com. If you are a member, uh, you can see it. Uh, if not, obviously, just just subscribe. It's pretty easy. Uh, it does help us out a lot, and we appreciate it. And again, you get picks, player props, and score projections for every single NCAA basketball game, NCAA football game, MLB, NFL, NHL, and NBA. You don't want to miss it. And now with Andy Knoll, we are covering tennis. We're covering hockey. We're covering everything. And before we even dive into this, we got a caller right now on line one. So we're going to answer the caller on line one. I'm excited. Hello, you're on the pick ball. What's going on, Gav? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, Dude, I, oh. Gotta, I can get better at that. I'll get better at it eventually, Pickball Nation. Uh, hold on. Gav, you're on hey the Pickball. What's going on? Hey, now. What's going on? Hey, hey now. Can I come up to Boston? Yeah, you should come up right now. But, all right, what's the deal? Let's talk Jets football right now. Who? What, what, what's going on? Before, whether there's a little bit of a commercial break. You got Darnold or not? If you could pick a quarterback right now, are you going with Sam Darnold, or would you rather them trade him and draft somebody this upcoming draft? Now, they got to just. They gotta just trade back. I mean, like, where would you I'm say done with that franchise? So would you say they're gonna come over to I want the Giants? Andy Nold to, I want Andy Noll to run the whole entire franchise. Oh my god! Uh, it'll yes, go, it'll go down a spiraling path no, quickly. You, you, nah, win, a, you win a Super Bowl in two years. All I know is that if it was basketball, he'd play the zone. Probably that's all I know with Andy Noll. Uh, I would play the zone. It, yeah. it clearly works. You win by thirty. Gab, you got. So who's your pick right now for the uh, March Madness tournament? If you could have one winner, who you got? Fairfield. Fairfield. Now, well, unfortunately, Rick Patino and Co. took them down, and they have to play Alabama today. So that should definitely be an interesting one. If Fairfield had to play Alabama, that would that would be a shit show for sure. But I think Ricky P's got it, to be honest. Wait. With so when I wait. So when I called in, does it show up? Like oh, you're you're you're, you're live, live right now. You're, you're live on the pick ball right now. Air everyone, air everyone, air everyone, air everyone out there can hear you right now. We literally have seven I million love, people viewing this right now on YouTube. They are listening to your dumbass Ooh. speak. Not too shabby. All right, Cav. Well, listen, maybe you call back. Come up with a question and call back in like 10. We're going to kill the rest of the Florida I'm State gonna, game real quick. I'm going to go catch a dub. All right. Sounds good. Enough, Enjoy right. Warzone. Again, You're not good. For everyone out there, we are looking for callers. You guys can call in and obviously just tell us who you guys are taking in the ball games because we do want to talk about sports betting. And, and we're talking about this game currently. Florida State leads 55-50 over uncg and i said before the game uncg is a team that could spread the floor i think they would actually match up against syracuse pretty well Ooh. against that zone um but it's working here i mean they got themselves back in this ball game even though they trailed pretty much uh the whole game by by 10 points 12 points uh back down to eight but it stayed pretty much in that in that range and all of a sudden they they, they now only trail by five on the free throw line 
misses. You got to make your free throws, Frank. I mean, <laughs> hey, I we mean, love that. I was going to say, we got Florida State, so missing that front end's big. But you did talk about it, Matt, again with Ohio State. I mean, they missed two front ends, and it's, yeah, you missed two free throws, but you don't even have the chance of those next two free throws. So, I mean, that's, that's a potential four points you're missing out, and that's the ball game. But that, that is the tail of the tape, Matt. Oh, there he goes. Raekwon again. Can we cover the eight? Florida State up oh, five. Yeah. He's out, he's out, how he's much? Out. How much time's left on that clock? Two forty-three, Dan. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ooh. I like our chances, guys. I mean, what do we what do we have here? The money line? Do you guys have to? See yeah, it? I got. I got. Oh well, you, well, you guys I bet. Have... You guys bet a C four on it, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, with the minus I got, eight. I got, I got minus eight. Eight. Yeah, I, I, I'll even take the ten. I told you. I, fair I got, enough. I was fair. I was being fair. I think Florida State covers the original spread. I, think I mean, hey, if they shut them down, down here, the free throws, they shut them down here. You're right. Yeah, and I think and I think Stan Jones. But it stays there, right? Yeah. Dude, this Grove is guy Stan is Jones killing. a free throw guy? Oh, no, I, uh, I was going to say, I like that. So now just giving you guys a quick update across the board here in March Madness and on TBS. If you guys can tune in the TBS, we got the 14 seed Eastern Washington currently leading over Kansas uh, with 10 minutes and 50 seconds remaining, but only by four. Kansas coming back in that ball game significantly only lead by four points with 10 minutes, 40 seconds remaining now. Uh, and so... Again, Kansas probably will get through this, uh, but you got to give Eastern Washington, Dan kind of mentioned, you got to give Eastern Washington credit, and there's still a lot of time. I mean, they can oh, hold yeah. on to this game easily, but oh, I yeah. just see the trend starting to come and, and get momentum. And again, over the there's too much time left, in my opinion, for Eastern Washington to really hold on to Yeah, this. to hang around. That's what I think, too. I mean, they're, you could tell right now, even their big men, like that kid is playing the game of his life right now, and there's still so much time left. I just think Kansas might be deeper again. I don't know much about Eastern Washington, but I have a feeling that the better team will probably win this game. Again, I know we talked about it earlier that I think it's going to be a big favorite today. Yesterday, a lot of upsets that we saw. Again, who knows, though? I mean, it's only, what, 240. We still have about eight hours of basketball left, so anything's really possible. And I know there's some big match, There's some big matchups coming up, too, like the 16-1 seeds, Grand Canyon, Iowa. Should be an interesting night for sure. And then we got Maryland, obviously. Maryland and UConn at 7-10. I know we're going to go back live for that. Well, let's pull that up here. So let's go on the Pick Vault mobile app and let's talk about Maryland versus uh, UConn. I know this is one of the most interesting games of the tournament. And and when the line came out and when the tournament was, uh, the bracket was being released, uh, you know, UConn was the favorite, but really close. I mean, it was pretty much, I think it was, it started out minus 115 or minus 110, something around there. And now the line's all the way up to minus 180. Uh, currently on on BetMGM minus one eighty minus one eighty, really? uh, and that's in New Jersey on BetMGM Sportsbook. Again, I will say this, and, and they're not a sponsor, but I will say this right now: BetMGM Sportsbook in New Jersey is the best sportsbook out there, completely. Um, and I'll go on, you know, just saying they give you so much free bets. I mean, I haven't, I've lost bets, and, and all of a sudden they're giving me free bets. They're giving me hundred dollars here, hundred dollars there, which is always fun uh, to play with house money, even when you're not even in the betting grind at all. You know, to get you, you know, into the get a little bit of action here and there. Bet MGM Sportsbook in New Jersey, best out there. So, you know, if you guys don't have them yet, uh, you know, at least check them out and take a few free, free plays. So, you said on, on Bet MGM, it's up to minus 180. Minus is, 180. Is there yeah. concern there that that's just a bunch of people that are like us in New yeah. Jersey that love UConn that are just hammering the shit out of Book Night and the boys? Like, I'm is this going to get minus is, 170 right now? Is this going to be the same kind of deal as like a Michigan State UCLA where everyone, everyone, everyone's on? I do think UConn is better than Michigan State was. Again, the Big Ten, I'm not that impressed with. Again, Maryland in the Big Ten. The only thing with Maryland that I could say they have a chance is that they have length all over the court. So if Book Knight, I think he could score from anywhere on anybody. And I know UConn's got some big guys too. But one thing I must say, Maryland's pretty versatile. But again, the Big Ten hasn't really impressed me. So tonight, maybe they'll change my mind. But right now, I think I like UConn. But too many people like UConn for me to love them. So I might I might side here with Maryland a little bit in the points, but the, who knows if they get they they definitely have the chance to get blown out though. Yeah, if you're gonna take Maryland, I definitely would throw it with the points because I do oh, think yeah. UConn has it. I would stay away from Maryland at all. I'd actually rather not bet on the game uh, at all. Just enjoy than, it than bet on uh, Maryland because I do think UConn's the better team. And as you mentioned, they do have Book Knight, and Book Knight on the floor is a complete different. He's a game changer. We kind of mentioned earlier having a guy like Cunningham for for Oklahoma State was the big differentiating point in that game, even though they were trailing. For most of the game, down the stretch, they gave the ball to Cunningham, and he ended up winning the game for them. And that's the same thing I see happening here when you're talking about the ability from Book Knight uh, to score the basketball and just take over ball games. We've seen it. I mean, they've been trailing by eight, ten points, and all of a sudden Book Knight comes in the game, right. whether it's because he's in foul trouble or not. We've watched UConn a bunch because 
again, I, I'll say it. My dad's a coach at St. Benedict's Prep in New Jersey. And Dan Hurley was the coach at St. Benedict's Prep right before my dad uh, was the coach there. So, you know, Dan Hurley has has, has gone come a long way since his high school days. But he's at UConn now. And, and so I always liked watching UConn. And so we watched him throughout the course of the season. And Book Knight's been a complete game changer. So if you haven't seen UConn play, they're a fun team to watch. And tonight, the pick vault has them actually winning this ball game 76.6 to 63.0 again this is on the pickball mobile app if you if you don't have it go subscribe right now go to www.thepickball.com and in the upper right hand corner all you got to do is click unlock your money and you will be brought to page where you can create your account and again weekly monthly or yearly less than a dollar a day you get picks player props and score projections for every game across the board you don't want to miss it never been a better time to, to join pickball nation then right now. So UNCG currently trails five points, uh, 57, 52, one minute to go in the ball game. Dan, you could be there. I mean, it's going to come down to one thing throws. and one thing only. Absolutely. Uh, uh, oh, here we uh, go. This uh, is big. Get in. You, uh, uh, I thought they were going to call the end one too. I would have nuts. Blood. He would have missed the free throw anyway. Up seven. So Florida State scores the basket. That might, that 59, just, 52. That might have just sealed the game, but Ooh. I don't know about the spread. The spread is going to be very, very close. Sweaty. This is big. And you got a score here, Dan. Up. No nice good. Score, here Rebounded. Go. Foul him. Foul him. No. This is why Man, I buy the eight. This right. is why it's I'm going to buy the eight. eight. All right, Matt. Dan, do you have minus? I have minus, minus eight. eight. Minus eight. I refuse to do the eight and a half. Oh, I thought I had minus eight. Oh, I thought I had minus eight. I had Florida State minus 10. No, I, yeah, I, thought I had Florida State minus eight. You had Florida State minus 10. Oh, okay. I thought you asked me Florida State minus eight. No, no, you're good. You're good. Oh no, yeah, no, it's totally fine. Misunderstood. Oh, Kansas it's time to make some free throws. That how Matt? Yeah, I, I have the minus ten. No, I have Florida State money line in, in betting, but um, responsibly though. Of course. <laughs> hey, the Florida State was big, and a lot of brackets had them going far. So this would be a huge closeout for me. So how far do you have them going? In one bracket, I have them, and might be honestly two brackets. I might have them as far as the Final Four, actually. I have them coming out as the team of that region. I don't like Michigan over there. I think Michigan might get upset by LSU, and then LSU goes down to Florida State in the Sweet 16. And then I think Florida State, either if it's not them, I think it might be Texas or maybe Bama. If Bama somehow gets through Texas if Texas loses to like UCLA or BYU, depending on who gets through that game. Who were three for Kansas to take the lead? Bang. Kansas so takes Kansas the lead. Kansas comes all the way back. Claws all the way back. Down 14 earlier. Uh, and they claw all the way back. Uh, the, mom, the moms love it. We love it. Florida State, cover the eight. So, again, if anyone has a chat or any questions, throw it in the chat or call us. Again, the number is 1 800 387 6355. Um, we're watching Kansas Eastern Washington. We're watching Florida State UNCG. And obviously, the stream is all about. Know who, Danny? Who? Come on now. The Bonnie's making a comeback oh, no. in the second half. I didn't know who you were going to say. LSU versus the Bonnie Ventures. Oh, uh, we got to turn that back on just soon. about to begin. Very um, soon. We're going to wait till the end of this Florida State game. Currently a nine-point lead, uh, a seven-point lead for Florida State. The live spread, supposedly for the St. Bonnie. Someone texted me that they got in on it. Well, they asked if they should. They had the Bonnie's plus seven and a half. Anyone's thoughts on that? Uh, Maybe. Maybe. That, that, hey. That's an all right number, I guess. I mean, we could turn that game on right here after because it's about just starting up the second half. That's live or that's second half? Uh, so, uh, no, I, I, I'm I, pretty sure it was live. I don't think it was a second half spread, but I, I'm not positive. I could find that out, though. Well, LSU is up 12 currently, so. Get in on it now. Get more points. Or just don't get in on it because LSU is going cock them. We'll see what happens. I like Bonaventure still. I think they'll get hot in the second half. They're definitely going to score more than 22 points. Uh, so, I mean, if their defense sticks the same way, I mean, it's going to come down to making shots. And uh, they do trail by 12 points, which is going to be hard to make a comeback here. So, we're in an official review in the Florida State versus UNCG game. So, we're going to pop back and we're going to put on the St. Bonaventure's game. Dan, if you pop yep. that on. I actually I believe this it's actually over. Um you can go to the bottom of your uh, Is it TN? Uh, oh, oh, actually, uh, I, I'll be honest though. If we're covering the eight and the ten on C four. We got to see this. I mean, I was about to. Fair say. enough. Fair enough. Put back the Florida State game. We got. We'll come back. We'll, we'll, we'll bop back to the Bonnies in one second. We're gonna end uh, um, the Florida State game until we go final there. Mm -mm -mm. Did he hit it? You think he hit it? No, it looks like they're hitting. Oh, we hit it. Eight point lead. Come on. It's good form. 
It's up and good. He was only 61% too. So that's that's pretty huge. That looks good. That looks real good. Uh, I don't know. It might might get a little sweaty, Dan. I'm getting a caller here. Three pointer up. If that kid hit a shot like that, I would have been livid. Uh oh. Locked. Oh no. Uh, I think they still have it. They're going to foul. Hello? Hello? Pickball? Yes, this is the pickball. Thanks for calling in. Who's this? Hey, this is uh, this is Chris Piscatelli from Upper Style River, New Jersey. Long time listener, first time caller. How are we? <laughs> What's up, it. Chris? What's How going on, doing? Chris? <laughs> Guys, I-, I need to know what are the chances of Rutgers winning the entire March Madness? I- I'm betting the house on it. Zero, zero, zero. Uh, I don't know. You said you're from New Jersey too. I don't think you could bet on uh, Rutgers technically. Uh, well, I got I got some uh, black market books. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, who do you like in this tournament? Well, do, you, uh, do you like Rutgers? Uh, who do I? Well, I, I mean, if they could beat Houston and make it to the Sweet 16, I would take that as a, them winning the March Madness. But uh, I, I, I mean, if that's your win in the March happen. Madness, then I like that. I like that as a win for you. I do think that they do beat Houston in the next round. I think they'll shock some people. They're a battle-tested team, Rutgers. Wait, They're actually? Top- I, I actually do think I think they have a very good chance of winning that game. I don't. I, I actually like low key kind of do. Yeah. But again, it is Houston and it is Rutgers. Like Rutgers is definitely capable hey, of going out there come, and laying it. You guys just cover on the <laughs> last second the dunk. Minus 10. Florida State so, in the last second dunk. Piscatelli, what's your is is Rutgers your actual national champion, like bracket wise, or do you have an actual pick? Nah, I don't have an actual pick. I mean, I'm just rooting for Rutgers because I went there. I mean, the, 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 uh, they're kind of dog water, but, uh, you know, I got to root for the hometown here, all right? Fair enough, fair enough. I know you're big into, the, you know, the betting game. Obviously, like you said, you have that black market book. Is there any game that you love today? If you had a best bet, what's your best bet today? Oh, man, I, you guys are putting me on the spot right now. I might have to call back in later. I'm a little nervous, to be honest. <laughs> No, no pressure, no don't pressure. Be, don't be nervous, pal. It's, we've all had our first time. I, I can't. I haven't even been falling. I was just watching Kansas getting their butts beat. And they're and they're, they're, they're actually two. winning they're right now. They're up two right now. Oh, man. Well, well listen, guys, I, I got to go <laughs> take some groceries out of the back of my car, but I appreciate you taking my call today. Hey, Chris, okay. we want to hear you call back later uh, because UConn's playing Maryland tonight, so make sure you call in later tonight. We're happy you called in. Thanks for calling, and again, go Rutgers. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Go Rutgers. We love we yeah, love. Let, me do, let me do a little more uh, RNA before I call back in again. I appreciate it, guys. All right, peace, uh, bro. Really, brother. Thanks, Chris. All right, again, people out there, call in. Like... That was a perfect example. You don't you don't need to have a ton of questions, but you know, just call in, have a question or two, and, and and we can have a little bit of a conversation. We're trying to get everyone's take on on the games across the league. And currently, like we said, the Jayhawks of Kansas are pulling away a little bit after trailing by 14 earlier in the game. Currently lead 73-66 with seven minutes, 45 seconds to go, and that's a timeout for Eastern. Hey Washington. Dan, can we rip the Bonnies and Tigers? Gold Tigers. Oh yeah, we could do that for sure. Gold Tigers. So we're going to go live, continue live uh, throughout the course of this game. And then we're going to hop off and uh, you guys will see us later tonight. I keep mentioning it because I want everyone to hop on later tonight because I think it's going to be a great episode talking about the UConn game. I think it's going to be a great game. I think maybe one of the better games of the tournament. So make sure you dive in. Oh, uh-oh. Uh, uh-oh. LSU, LSU, LSU and the Bonnie sure starting, to get a little out. Out, starting to get a little out of hand. Still, still some time. Still there is some time. time. Still Absolutely. some time. We just got to score. Agreed. I, I just, I know I was highlighting earlier. I mean, hey, I mean, I've seen them get hot too, but the Bonnies are a team that are hot or cold shooting wise. Obviously, you mentioned that you talked a lot about cues, the Jekyll and Hyde. It's kind of how they don't show up sometimes in the neutral court. The Bonnies were very similar. Their record, not that it was skewed, but a lot of their wins came at home this year at their home arena. I believe they only lost one time, and then the other three losses came on the road. So they were clearly beatable in a scenario when they weren't in the comfort of their own house. So I just think this might have been too big of a stage for them, kind of. But who knows? Maybe they make a comeback. Yeah, and I, there's I will, a three there. There's still plenty of time. I will say, Andy, one thing I guess that might put some Bonnie's betters at a little bit of ease. I mean, you look at at the box right now. I mean, they're one of twelve from three. Yeah, they're nine of thirty or ten of thirty-five, two of thirteen from three. I mean, that's twenty-six <laughs> percent. And they hit both threes this half. I think two out of three. So we're off to a hot start. 
Oh, don't get in. I, I'm, I'm just worried that every LSU time LSU is going to keep scoring. That's what, I'm, uh, that, yeah. that's what I'm a little worried about. I'm worried that every time LSU is going to come down, they're just going to score. I couldn't see if the, did that go in. Yes. Yeah. The lights are up by the. But they can't be trading buckets right now. They need to get a no, right. Yeah, stops, they need to get know? a stop. And the defensive, like it's like you said, it's great that they're hitting shots, but not saying that. Not saying that they won't get stops, like you guys have mentioned multiple times today. The Bonnies are a great defensive team. So. But sometimes, but sometimes horrible. great defensive teams meet great offensive teams, and LSU has been one of the better offensive teams in the country this year, especially recently too. So, I think it'll come down to the wire. Honestly, I don't think it's oh logo range. Oh God, uh, you can't get boxed Just out like that. Cleared them out. Oh my gosh, that was a disaster. That was that was that, that should have been a foul. To I was gonna say with. that was horrible on the Bon Bonaventure's part. It was horrible on LSU's foul part. On the box out. Definitely. I I almost thought it was such a foul that I thought it was the other way around. I thought the bond. I'm like, how did the LSU guy even get under there? That's a wet shot, though. Yeah, no, same guy hit two threes in a row. He can get. Oh, actually, no, that's Attaway, the second guy. But Welch, if the guy that hit the first, you know, here he is. He hit this one. If he gets starts getting hot, that's a really good sign for the Bonnies. He's their like best that. three point shooter. I'm hoping so they really need Kyle Lofton, the point guard, who Javante Smart, number one on LSU, is guarding right now. Like I mentioned, Dan, he's the leading scorer. He was the guy that kind of needed to get going for the Bonnies. He had only like four points in the first half. I, I, you're looking at the score now, box score, Frank. What does he have? Six? Kyle Lofton. He's got six yep. points. He's one of 11 from the field, and four of his points have come from the line of that six. So without him, the, bo- the Bonaventure said Bonnies are going to struggle to win this game, I think. So he's got to get going for you guys um, to, for the Bonnie backers that are watching, and for you and Maddie to feel feel a little bit better like you got a chance. I think. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm hoping again. The amount of things I've seen this tournament, ever since I saw Notre Dame come back from 16, anything's possible. I don't really care how much anyone's down by, but I mean, I definitely agree. The biggest thing is it's going to come down to getting stopped because LSU is just going to keep bullying them in the paint, and we just hope we keep hitting threes and got to just keep cutting the deficit. You got to chip away. But again, I don't want to. Just, I don't want to see what San Diego State did against Syracuse yesterday. I feel like they just got desperate way too early and just started forcing everything. I think if you actually start working that Syracuse zone. Definitely even have a chance to kind of beat it, but instead they kind of just were flailing up shots and threes everywhere. But Eastern Washington right now still kind of hanging around, but Kansas still up. Michigan's up 10 to 4 right now with 17 minutes left in the first. Again, the LSU is up 12 right now. And is there any what what's the next slate of games? Yeah, I was actually uh, about Michigan, to go into Michigan that. just started against Texas Southern. Alabama and Iona's in that next slate. Creighton and the Gauchos. That's a good one. And uh, there's Drake USC. I mean, uh, again, Drake just, USC is probably the one I would want to watch. Honestly, yeah, we're we're honestly uh, like Andy saying, going over the games. We're getting into that stretch, one of those periods during the day where a couple games start. Uh, mentioning Michigan just started. Creighton and, and UCSB at three thirty, four o'clock. Iona, Alabama, four thirty. Drake USC. I mean, it's it's going to be. What's your good favorite? Basketball. What's your favorite? Well, out of those games you just read, what's your favorite? I guess play out of all those games. Out of the four, four of next the, games, yeah. Well, Michigan, Texas Southern starts, so we can't really give out that one. Are you asking me for a bet, like uh, a, a yeah, line whatever, or, whatever, anything? Um, what? I mean, I mean, if I'm throwing something weird together, I, I I thought about it already. I actually did do it. It's a, I had Florida State money line in a parlay. I listened to my dad. He was big on Creighton. He was also big on Georgetown today. So that could be an ugly sign for me. Who knows, Dad? If you're watching, I didn't listen to you really on Georgetown and do anything, thank God. But I listened to you on Creighton, included them in the parlay. Alabama has a big favorites in there. And I also have USC in there. I mean, I, I, we're going to have to definitely get your dad back on because I know he gave us a lot of plays after that live stream yesterday. So yeah. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to break it back down with him, especially for that Maryland-UConn game too. He was, he, he was high on UConn as he well. He was high so, on UConn, right? I mean, we both watch a lot of UConn with Book Night and stuff, being Seton Hall guys. So we know what they're made of and we see what they're like. I mean, we're Rutgers fans too. So we watch Maryland play a lot of Big Ten basketball. And I don't think Maryland is that good. They have some solid defensive players, but they're kind of a Jekyll and Hyde team offensively. They can show up sometimes or they just go ice cold and they're nowhere to be found. Yeah, so, I mean, it'll definitely be interesting game for the most part. Again, like you said, it's going to be a good matchup, and it's just one of those games, again, I just don't trust when too many people are so high on one team. I just get nervous. Again, I'll probably completely stay away from it. For UConn. You're talking about for you, yeah, for the UConn-Maryland game. I just think it's so – I it could really – it's a coin flip. It could really go either way because it's going to come down to one player. It's going to be book night and what UConn could do when he's not on the court. If Maryland could find a way to dominate when book night's not in the game and go on runs and take advantage of that – there's no reason they can't give them a game. 
But if they just let Book Knight oh. literally score all over him, kind of like Buddy Beheim scored all over San Diego State. I guess that's what I'm looking for. I want one person to actually stop Buddy Beheim. Just double him because you guys rely on him like no other. I've actually I haven't seen a team rely on a kid so much before, at least yet. So it's just going to be a matter of time that someone locks him up. I mean, I hope he keeps hitting shots because he shoots from all over the court. But what is going on here? Hands, hands, hands. Oh, that's Bang. tough. That's Cam, tough. Cam Thomas is very nice from three. So currently LSU leads 48-35, a 13-point lead. But that's tough on the defense because he played good D. You forced a, a loose ball, and then all of a sudden uh, the ball broken gets play. loose. Yeah. And everyone goes for it, and then it just happens to get to the guy in the corner for wide open. Broke, those broken scrambled plays are always tough to stop. I mean, Cliff Schaefer, you know, he used to coach us up on that kind of shit. We used to play those kind of games where we had to scramble plays, and we had to do our best to do it in practice, and he would play against us and get fired up too. So, I mean, you see those kind of things. It sucks when you force that loose ball. Everyone scrambles for it. You try to dive, hustle, get it, and the other team scraps it. They throw a nice pass into the wide open corner. Probably That's for the, terrible the, shot. the best shooter on the court found the ball in the corner. Easy shot, splash. That's a terrible shot. Bonaventure is fine. I mean, the thing is this. They, they cannot. You cannot just launch threes. I get you're trying to stay in the game. That's what you said yesterday. I mean, you're touching. I was like, yeah, no, I said before, too, San Diego State, it just they got desperate too early. And I don't think they, like you said, St. Bonaventure hasn't done it yet. I just hope they keep, yeah, bring it to the rim. Keep going at the rim. There's still so much time left. Yeah, down down to 11 and we're going to the free throw line. A lot of dig and a lot of pride. Come on. Kansas should be fine. I feel bad actually for Eastern Washington because truthfully, I I don't want to say they deserve to win because it's still five minutes, but. They probably played one of the best games of their lives, to be honest with you. I and, mean, that Groves guy definitely played. Yeah, the best I mean, that kid. He almost has a 30 piece. Yeah, against Kansas. I mean, he'll never forget that win or against lose. the guy that's probably going to the NBA and David McCormick. Definitely, definitely showed him up. I think he's, I think he's a lottery projected pick. So now, so now, uh, we're going to pop in. I know we're still covering both these games and we're going to keep covering them, but then I want you to pop in and talk about, um, the, Six o'clock matchup, which is if you pull it up here, I'll show you which one. I, I just I just saw it come up on the screen. I wanted to talk about that briefly. Um, which do you know what the six o'clock game is? Uh, GCU and Iowa. Iowa. Here it is, Grand Canyon. Is that the one you like? Yeah, BYU and UCLA. Yeah, it was down there. Oh, there it is. Um, wait. Here we go. All right, so again, we're going to go to the pick vault site here uh, for you guys so you can see the play uh, alongside the score projection as well. But but we're talking about the game tonight at 6. What time is it? 6.15, I believe the game is is tipping. Uh, and we got UC, USC taking on Drake. Uh, I, who do you guys both have in that one? I know we're Which about one? Early. USC and Drake? USC, yes. for sure. I have USC. I was going to say, I, I do think this Drake team, a lot of people were so high on them. They didn't impress me in the playoff play in game. I know a lot of people are on Drake. Drake kind of plus six. I don't know if a lot of people are on it, but a lot of people are high again on this USC team. I know Andy talks about them a lot, like the yeah. Mobley brothers. I know you're very into them, so I'll let you spit a minute because you obviously, you know more about USC than I do. I just know Drake probably barely won that playing game against who they play, Wichita State, Wichita right? State, yeah, and they, that, they look, did not look they, very they good. Look, they look very ugly in that game. So if they play like that, USC is going to completely take advantage of them. But again, you got to be careful because this Drake team, for how bad they did play, they still found a way to win the, win the game, so I kind of look at that. But USC Absolutely. is good, so it's going to be definitely a good matchup. No, and I think the Mobley brothers, I mean, Evan has been unbelievable this year. He's a potential. He's a lottery pick for sure, potential top five, honestly. Uh, 7-2, I mean, his brother is seven feet as well, uh, Isaiah Mobley. And I just think the two of them together have been awesome inside all year. I mean, they have great guard play as well. Taj Eddy has been awesome for them. They have great three-point shooters around the Mobley brothers. So I just think they've been really effective and have had a resurgent season as a USC program that we typically see being one of the best out in the Pac-12. But recently they haven't been up to those top standards. So it was good to see them have a good season again. And I think they're a team that can make a little bit of a run with the Mobley brothers as long as they stay out of foul trouble and the shooters do their do some do some good shooting. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, I mean the pick vault is on Drake plus six. I mean the final score projection there was USC seventy point eight. Drake 65.9. So again, it's right there, but it is Drake plus six and a half with USC winning the game. So again, it is on a lot of people do think USC is good enough to beat this team. But again, I think it's also one of those things. A lot of people will sleep on Drake because of the way they played in the play-in game. And another game I want to kind of, that highlights there in the play-in games, UCLA beating Michigan State. And now they have BYU today. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that's, a, that's going to be different. Drake didn't look great. UCLA looked unbelievable. And I think they're actually going to lose well, to BYU today. I would say 
I would say that they looked unbelievable down the stretch of that game. I don't think they looked unbelievable the whole game. I guess, I guess my other problem is I just realized how bad Michigan State really is. Yeah, I agree. I think Michigan State was a little overrated. I think we're finding out that the Big, Big Ten, Ten is, might, yes. might, might be as a whole conference. That's why I really like UConn today against Maryland as well. That's why I don't like, to be honest with you, that's why I don't like Rutgers to go far. I mean, everyone's been talking Maybe, about yeah. how Rutgers can win the whole thing and beat down – beat. Houston, I just don't see that happening when they weren't even one of the better teams. It, uh, to be honest with you, they weren't one of the best teams. They were one of the good teams in, in the Big Ten. Obviously, they make the tournament, but they weren't one of the top three teams, I don't think, in the Big Ten. And, and to be honest with you, I just don't see they can make it that far uh, in this tournament whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think if anything, they might make, like I said, a run to potentially, I think, the Sweet 16 if they could beat Houston. Uh, I mean, I don't think Houston is – I think they're a good team. Don't get me wrong. wrong. Crit Quentin Grimes is a baller. I mean, Caleb Mills also balls off the bench for them too. I just think that Rutgers is a team that when they have the momentum, when they're really, you know, confident in themselves, motivated, um, they play really well. And I think Coach Peichel is a great coach, and I think he knows how to get his guys fired up. And they've kind of found the mojo at the right time, I feel like. They were a team that were going to qualify for the NCAA tournament last year for the first time. They were even better than they were this year. And they kind of got robbed of that opportunity. And I think that sits in the back of their mind, kind of. And they're using this opportunity now as a 10 seed. I think they got a little underseeded, in my opinion. It could have been an 8 or 9. But I think they fell in a good spot as a 10, facing a Clemson team. And I think they can make a little bit of a run, like I said. Yeah, they're going to have to get through Houston. I don't see that happening. But again, I have been so wrong this tournament, I have no idea. So, you know, don't go with my gut. Follow the pick ball. The pick ball, I know we were all over... Uh, Houston yesterday. I think we're going to have Houston again tomorrow. Uh, I was looking at it earlier, um, but I believe the pick ball is all over Houston tomorrow. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll obviously release that tonight um, and moving forward in the tournament. But Dan, can you pull up the pick ball bracket? Yeah, that's actually people? I was actually that's exactly what I just uh, that I'm going to it right now. I, I kind of wanted to see how phone. deep uh, we had some of these teams going, specifically Ohio State. I know we had them going pretty far. I believe it was either the Elite Eight or the Final Four uh, in the pick ball bracket. Again, this is brought to you by the artificial intelligence computer back simulation so when you're talking about an upset that occurs that early in the first round it's just tough uh for everyone out there yeah. so i was just I'm, I'm getting up right now i'm just uh air dropping it to my laptop so they're going to a commercial media mark timeout uh lsu leads by 10 41 to 41 matt and dan how are you guys feeling i mean i want to know do, do you guys see the bonnie's making a run at this it's it's still a game or do you think lsu is looking a little too good right now and maybe it stays around a 10, eight point cushion. It doesn't really get much closer. Uh, I'll be honest. I feel like it's got it. I do think Bonaventure, I, again, I'm not going to say I, I'm worried about them. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like fully confident in them. But at the same time, I do think the spread was at that, you know, two for a reason. So I'm hoping that does become a game. Cause again, we're a couple stops away and a couple big shots away from making this a game. Again, Bonnie's haven't looked great. Uh, again, I'm just worried that LSU, every time they come down the court, they're just going to score. So if Bonaventure doesn't, you know, too aggressive and just chuck up threes, like we just saw, they just took it to the hole and got an and one. So I think that's really the key to the whole entire game. But I'm not worried yet. Definitely getting there. They're going to have to make, th you know, to win the ball game, they're going to have to make threes down the stretch. And, and kind of touching on, on Dan's point, they can't force threes because that's how you lose games. We saw it yesterday a number of times. Teams forcing threes ends up losing the ball game. But here, you can't do that. You got to bring the ball to the rim, but you're going to have to make big time shots at some point uh, in this game because, like you said, Andy, LSU is one of the better offenses in the country. And even though your defense is carrying you, if you're Bonnie, keeping you in the ball game because you shot so poorly from the field, you shot so poorly from the three point, you know, three point line, yeah. all of a sudden your defense keeping the game, you're going to have to make, you're going to have to score. I mean, to be honest with you, especially after going down so much. So you're going to have to make threes. So, uh, again, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a close one. So you're asking my opinion. Yeah, I, I'm sticking with the Bonnies. I think they could pull this one out for sure. Uh, but obviously LSU's poised and put themselves in a situation where you could obviously go deep. Definitely a good spot. And again, I do think if LSU gets past this game again, I don't. We actually have the bracket up right here. I'm looking at where LSU is. They're with in Michigan. The, they're with Michigan. So yeah, I mean that could definitely be. A good little matchup there. I mean, again, I just think Michigan, like you kind of said earlier, Andy, like I don't know if I'm all in on Michigan. That's going to be a great – that talk about a great yeah. game. I mean, it's going to be – it's going to come down to what Dickerson, I think, could really do down low and stopping LSU's big men because obviously we see what they can do in the paint. I think that will come down to the wire too. Yeah. Having Livers out definitely hurts Michigan if oh, he is out. And I think that's one of the major keys, Livers being out. He, I mean, he's a guy that scores close to 15 points per game, gets about six to seven boards per game. 
I mean, that's huge. He's a senior leader as well. So without a senior leadership, I think they could struggle against guys. I mean, I think this is potentially, you said it yourself, Dan, this could be the matchup of the second round, if not one of the better matchups that we will see I in agree. the second round. It's a top five one for sure, I think, if not the best. I think this could be one of the bigger upsets you see in the second round where LSU, like I, we, like I mentioned earlier, they have three studs, Watford, Smart, Thomas. These guys can get hot. No livers. I think that makes them struggle a little bit offensively. And like we mentioned about the Bonnies right now, Michigan is one of the best defensive teams in the country too. But if you can't score and keep up with the pace of a team like LSU, then the, the defense can only get you so far. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I hope, I hope they get us a little further here, Andy. I'm really hoping. Do we have Michigan in the pickball bracket? I believe getting far. Uh, right? We do have Michigan in the pickball bracket. They do beat Bon. They do. They would beat LSU. Well, the, right here, we do have the bond adventures. The, the bracket does have the bond adventures who then would meet up the winner of Florida State and Georgetown would then take on that winner. So that I mean that's a bra- that's a side and a half. See, right yeah, there. I was gonna say that's in my bracket. Most of mine, that's where I have Florida State. If I don't have LSU already beating Michigan, then I have Florida State beating Michigan there. I don't really see Michigan going very far this year, honestly. I know as I, I thought they were a very good team, but the liver's injury really throws me off off on them, honestly. Not knowing how long he'll be out. So Dan's pitting uh, the entire bracket in the sc- in the screen so we can see. Oh, you want here. the? I was I was going down. I was just showing the yeah, bottom left bracket. The, the yeah. whole thing, so we could just quickly see um, the mm-hmm. whole thing here. Yep. Sorry, it's no, lagging. No, no, you're, it's not lagging. No, no, no. I know. I'm just trying to like make it work. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So obviously we have Gonzaga winning the whole thing. I kind of wanted to break it down. What are your thoughts on Baylor? Well, uh, you know, you two specifically to my left. What are your thoughts on Baylor? Because Dan and I are both uh, pretty in on Baylor watching them play this season, yeah. obviously. Frank, uh, alongside. So, yeah, talk about Baylor quickly uh, and, and what do you think they could do in this tournament? And and obviously from the pickfall side of things, we think we had Ohio State. So Ohio State going all the way, if you could see here, Ohio State going uh, all the way. Let me see if I can. All the way to the Elite Eight and losing the Baylor uh, in the Elite Eight and, and Baylor moving on to the Final Four. So, Frank, kind of talk about what you think about Baylor and, and do you think they got any shot at winning this tournament? Yeah, so I think particularly what interests me and is something that is why I brought up Purdue is because of the way that the bracket sort of lines up here is that a lot of people have uh, Purdue in that next round and then uh, beating Villanova, uh, I feel like is what a lot of people had. Um, but I mean, you look at it and the road is really paid for them again with Ohio state as well. That I feel like is what a lot of people had in their elite eight. And people were pretty comfortable with that in the body of work overall that we saw with Ohio state. And then towards the end of the season as well, again, a really disappointing game, but I mean, I liked them before again, I have them in my final four and in most of my brackets, if not every single bracket, I don't think I, I switched Ohio state in there, but I mean, it really paves, it paves the way we saw them play yesterday. They, Started off a little bit slow again, like a lot of these teams here. But, I mean, they really came on strong at the end. And I think they have really good shots to make it to the Final Four. Yeah, so Baylor's, uh, Baylor's number two, one of those teams that we have going to the Final Four. I'm going to pull the bracket back up. And, Andy, kind of touch on what you think about yeah. Baylor. Obviously, they're a team. How far do you have them going in yours? Uh, so, I have four brackets, actually. A couple that are I threw some money in with some friends on a pool. And then two of them were just for fun. I actually have Baylor winning two of my four brackets um, in the bracket that we did personally between the four of us. I have them winning, and in one of my money brackets, I have them winning. And I just think this is a team they lost in the conference tournament in the first – not the first round, but their first game against Oklahoma Oklahoma State. And I think the teams that lose early in their conference tournaments are the teams that you like to go far kind of in a March Madness, like a Florida State that also lost. And and I just think they're a team that's built – defensively, they've been great this year. They have so many guys offensively, Jared Butler, Davion Mitchell – Mike Oteague, I mean, vital defensively is has been awesome inside. They have some great guys off the bench. Meyer, um, I mean, Flo Therama. So just a few names out there. But I think they're a team that easily gets to the Final Four now with the path that's being created. Purdue out. I mean, Ohio State out. That at best, they'd have to play. I mean, UNC going out, I think it was huge yesterday. That was a matchup that was going to be super tough for them. Obviously, Wisconsin was a team that was ranked early in the year. And they were a team that people thought highly of. So maybe they show up and give them a game. But I don't think the matchup suits uh, the Badgers very well. So I think Baylor's honestly getting a free ride almost now to the Elite Eight, basically, where I'm thinking at best now they will probably face Arkansas. Ooh. 
That would be interesting. Unless too. it's Texas Tech that sneaks through on that side now, or Florida team maybe goes on a hot run because I know Dan has talked a lot about he loves the Gators and how Trey Mann can get very hot and lead his team. And to as much as he could get so hot, that Florida team could look so cold. Like I was saying the other day I against am. Virginia Tech, it's so Florida is definitely talk. I know we always always talk about Jekyll and Hyde. I feel like that's just college in general this year, but just Florida, they have the talent to do it. It's just a matter of time if they all can do it because again they have a deep bench. I know Scotty Lewis. He was a top prospect going to Florida who doesn't get that many minutes. But when he does get minutes, like he did yesterday, and he plays well, we see what Florida could do. So if they could all do it, Florida does have the potential to make a run. So, Yeah, and you know who I saw? I watched a video on, on Florida uh, yesterday. Um, he fouled the three-point shooter here, and, and, and the Bonnies are going to line. Currently trailed by 14 points. Uh, LSU kind of taking this game over a little bit. Uh, and really, it's been bully ball. I want to take a second. It's really been bully ball, rebounding the basketball and getting second chance looks on the offensive side of the ball, and then forcing uh, the Bonnies to shoot threes and rebounding on the defensive side of the ball. That's really been the difference the last five or minutes or so that's kind of extended this lead. But going to the free throw line, you can't you can't foul three-point shooters. Anyway, uh, the Bonnies going to the free throw line. He makes the first. But touching on kind of what you mentioned, Florida is a team that has a lot of talent. I watched a whole episode earlier this morning on Aaron Andrews. You know, Aaron Aaron Andrews went to Florida. I did not know she goes to Florida. I do know Aaron Andrews, though, for sure. I know who Aaron Andrews is. Yeah, she's she's been all over uh, Florida uh, on her story yesterday. I was watching because once I watched the little thing, uh, whatever it was, it was like a 30 second, 40 second uh, video or whatever it was on her podcast. But Aaron Andrews kind of talked about how she went to Florida and how the team was great when she was there and they're better now than she's and they're more poised now, she said, to make a run than, than she Ooh. believes, uh, you know, that she's seen in a long time. And she actually turned off the game yesterday. That, that was her story. She turned off the game because she couldn't watch. She said it was uh, too nerve wracking. I'm going to have so. to go follow Aaron Andrews. I, right I, I mean, listen, hey, it's, it's definitely a I was going to say it's yeah, a good follow regardless. Good follow. Florida Gators are not. Again, bully ball, rebounding off at the side of the football, laying that's it in. That's definitely gold. That's a basket. Man. Again, you don't rebound. That's another one of those things I'll start saying. You got to rebound. Absolutely. Rebounding is one of the biggest things. I mean, that's why we loved UNC so much yesterday. Me and Frank, when we talked about Wisconsin and playing them, UNC has major size this year. And I think you guys know that their big man rotation was huge. And in college basketball, offensive rebounding is huge. Guys aren't knockdown shooters like in the NBA. They're not paid to stand there and hit the threes at a 40% clip that a lot of those guys in the league do. So they're only going to hit at 20, 30%. These college guys, only the best ones are hitting that higher 30%, lower 40. So offensive rebounding is a huge thing in this game because then you can get your team second chances, either another, another wide open three or just an easy putback. And that's a major part of the college game these days, the guys that hustle and get those buckets. Yeah, I mean, also, side note too of Aaron Andrews, can is it? she has a number in her bio. Is that like a little much? No, no, that can't be a phone number. It's one of these news. Like there's a new app. app. There's a new app out there that like people can connect. These famous people can connect to like their followers oh, uh, and notify them like when they're releasing like you know a new makeup brand or whatever. Oh, that's whatever it is. cool. So it's kind of like an it's interaction like thing. Oh, and you you actually right. can interact one on one with them if if the celebrity you know invites you. And to one, uh, it's actually a service we were looking at. Oh. Cool, I was the only reason say. I know that, but, but yeah, <laughs> it's not her actual. Oh, yeah, see, I'm about to call, let's call that number. Trust me, Aaron Andrews is not putting her real. I would hope not. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope not on her Instagram bio. <laughs> That's uh, what I mean. I mean, you got you got <laughs> 1.2 million followers right now. I promise you, it's not a real number. No, I know. No, I was gonna say Dan, it might give, later. Dan, give it a call. Can, we, can we call it live on? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have to call it later on tonight. The other side is Matt now because he gave it a call earlier. Trust me, I didn't want to say it, but I guess you guys, that's kind of I called it six times trying to get an answer from Aaron Andrews. I'm kidding. I didn't call her. I was like, Aaron, Just trying to you? hear her voice. <laughs> Oh, three pointer up, and this game looks like it's just about over. It's all but over. What was the Kansas what game. was the uh, spread in that one? Oh my, the spread was like nine and a half, ten, right? What did Charlie have? Uh, I can Do you remember. Sorry, Kansas came all the way back. They were down four to like. Right. Nah, you're good. I can. Uh, I'll check on Action Network. Uh, Damn, Tanner work. Groves looks upset. I, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure. I'll tell you what. This, Maybe he's a senior. He has, so. he has played an incredible I, game. I think he's. He really I know is. it's actually funny. I just saw the only reason I know it because I saw his brother walk off the court too. He has a brother on the same team, and I think his I brother. I got an update that he was TikTok brother might famous, be a senior. The brother or something. Really? Something I happened. I actually, his brother was actually in Hoodwinked. Uh, plus, he was plus the, eleven. He was the lumberjack in Hoodwinked. <laughs> Looks smack like him. To be honest with you. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That is one hell of a beard. It is. A, it, it is a nice beard. Ooh, 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 you, you guys remember Hoodwinked? Yeah, hey, of pull, course. Pull, pull up, pull, pull oh, up yeah. Hoodwinked on your on your. Computer. Um, Dan, to answer your question, depending on. You, who, where you might have gotten in, if you bought a half point or not, whatnot. 
EWU is about 10 and a half, 11 point, a point underdog. Oh, so it's right there. Of course, they know. Yeah, Vegas knows. Oh, he had 35 so points tell tonight. Me, tell me this is not Tanner Groves. This looks smack like Tanner Groves. Hold on. That's going to pull it up here. Tell me this does not look smack like Tanner Groves. Pull him up. Hey, now. Uh, they're in the game now they're going to lose it by double digits here unless they score but they're going to lose the game by double digits but what a good effort for eastern washington but no upset here uh as K kansas will be moving on to the next round i think they just covered the spread off that unless they, they found probably just covered that's wow, much. That is, great good for them the one kid is tiktok famous that was him interesting yeah I guess his brother I, I, plays I there too from bleacher dude and said can't. that and i was confused so again, one more time, I'll say it. You guys can call in right now or text uh, or obviously put here uh, on, the, on the chat, in the live chat. Um, the phone number is 1-800-387-6355. Call now. We're trying to get callers on here to answer any questions. We are going to be going live later tonight for those of you guys that are just joining. We are going to get go live later tonight for the UConn versus Maryland game. I know the pickball is all over UConn tonight, um, and, and we've been talking back and forth. Dan is the only one, I believe, up here that is on Maryland, which is point. Dan's been spot on every time that we've all been – one way and Dan went the other way. Dan's been spot on, so maybe go with Dan here. Uh oh, but the pick fault and all three of us, uh, me, Frank, and Andy, are all over UConn and tonight. I, and, and I it think goes the, back to book night. I think the other one, too, that everyone I don't, actually I don't know who else is against it, but I, I like BYU over UCLA tonight. I don't no, know I'm, what it I'm is. With you there. I rode with them just for the playing game, and I know that's all they got, they got nothing else. BYU is going to come in. I saw them take a COVID test, they look hyped up, they're ready to go. And I stick it's a team that they. That they're going to take this opportunity. And yeah, I don't think UCLA is probably deserving to be in. The, they obviously did deserve it, but I don't even think Michigan State should have been in the playing game. So that game really did not, it didn't do much for me. So, yeah. was, uh, was that video where the people getting hyped up to do the COVID test? That was BYU. Was it someone else? I thought it was I, BYU. No, I, no, I, I, I think it was BYU. And the lady like called and you said a name yeah, and they the ran tickets, through like yeah. a tunnel. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so actually, Dan, I want to I want to talk about that game a little bit. I'm actually on the other side from you. I'm, uh -oh. I'm actually going to ride with the guys that were in the first four game, and they got a little not experience, but a little momentum going. They came back, had a nice win. They didn't play their best. I think they play a lot better today. I think Johnny Juzang stays hot, keeps stroking the ball. I think Hawkes has another big day, and oh, our boy whoa. Tiger Campbell will get well, it done. As I was well. going to say, I, I think Tiger Campbell is obviously the X factor. Just interesting because I feel like. I know Frank said he was on uh, BYU, but I know you were on Michigan State against UCLA I, the other day. I, I mean, I was, and that's why I have to ride. I feel like I kind of just have to stick to my guns there and made a, a misjudgment in, in the Michigan State but, team. Again, they had some issues down the stretch, but we clearly saw um, two days ago that they were not going to beat BYU. But I, I think I just got to stick to my guns. Uh, my initial thought was that Michigan State would beat them and not UCLA. So I think I just got to – I just got to. Fair yeah, enough. Or that. UCLA is going to throw it right in my the, face. The, the, those were those were my they original could. thoughts they, too. Frank. They look good. They yeah, do, UCLA. They look good in that game. They could definitely come in hot. I mean, not, if, not great, but good. If St. Bonaventure could get somewhat of a stop, it's not even the stops. It's not even the stops. It, it comes down to you just can't. You got to rebound because they they're, they're they're stopping them and then they're just letting them get the offensive rebound and they finish a, a layup. That's happened like almost every point this quarter. I mean, I haven't even seen them make a three since that one right. three that was falling yeah, out of bounds. Three, right? It's nuts, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, going back to that game, the BYU game tonight, I think I might be on BYU as well. Uh, I was looking at UCLA, uh, and I did like UCLA in that game uh, in the first playing game. I, I know I actually liked – you were all over UCLA uh, in the first one. So what, 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 what makes you switch from you know UCLA after taking them the first round to now all of a sudden going the other way? I mean, I guess at first I just didn't think – again, now we're really realizing the Big Ten are frauds. And I didn't really think Michigan State – I mean, they had Langford. He's been there for about six years. If he couldn't do it, no one can for Michigan State. Izzo should probably keep chasing guys down the down the locker room because that's not working for them either. Yeah, but for the most part, I thought UCLA, just a team that, again, they're kind of reminding me of like a Florida. Like Andy mentioned, some of those guys' names, like a Tiger Campbell is kind of like a Trey Man. If he plays well, everybody plays well. But a BYU team, I just think UCLA, they shot the ball well, like you said, Andy, in the second half. I don't think UCLA could do it consistently. And BYU, I think, maybe just an all-around better team. So, unfortunately, I did say, though, if Michigan State beat UCLA, Michigan State would pull off a win today against BYU. So that's why I had to stick with my gut. I'm going to fade UCLA this time. I believed in them once, and I don't think I could do it again. So, yeah, I'm all in on BYU. No, and absolutely. Something about the Mormons, yeah, too. No, I don't know what listen, it is. And BYU is a great team. I've watched them play a lot. They've been a team that I've actually 
try to either fade or ride with kind of, I, I like to watch certain teams kind of and pick a few teams every year that I like to specifically almost watch every game and bet either for them or against them because I know how they play and their Definitely. style and kind of how they are. And obviously I watch other games and go along with that as well. But I always kind of try to pick teams. And BYU was one of the teams out in the West Coast that I picked this year because I just thought Barcelo, Harems, I mean, all these other guys that they have on the team, Gideon George, Brandon Avert. Uh, I just think all great players, and they were fun to watch as a team. Like I know you said, high scoring team. They can yeah. they can hit the three ball. They can they can be electric. We saw the first half against Gonzaga in the WCC championship game where they almost they were up ten at halftime. They shot seventy five percent. I mean, they were really good. But we can also see what happens when they get cold. Oh, yeah. I've seen them struggle as well. There's a team that scares me in this big moment, kind of on the stage. I just think UCLA, having been there already, might just show up. And I think. Being the dogs, I think that motivates him. Mick Cronin, I think, is the better coach in this situation. He's been to these moments with Cincinnati in the past, and I think that he keeps this L- this UCLA a blue blood program, a program that we have. They're kind of our last blue blood that we really – I mean, I'm trying to think who else is in the field that's really a blue blood. UNC fell out. Kentucky didn't make it. Duke didn't make the it. The closest thing to blue, I guess, is Kansas, and I don't really yeah, consider yeah, Kansas a K- blue blood. Kansas is about the only other blue blood that I can think of that's really in the field that has a shot of going anywhere or doing anything. So – I agree. No, I, th- I completely th- th- agree. The NCAA tournament needs a team like UCLA to still be there. So I think the backers obviously told the refs already today, make sure the, the spread gets covered, maybe a little money line action. Well, yeah, know? I mean, it's also just good for the Pac-12 because one thing that bothers me about Pac-12 after dark game, Bill Walton just sits there and just screams about they're the conference of champions, conference of champions. Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't really remember the last time a Pac-12 team won it. I mean, I Arizona, could be, maybe like, back in the early Back in the day. 2000s. And ever, ever, ever since that, all the only way they could win is if they cheat. So... We see what goes on in the Pac-12, or it's evident at least, because I think yeah. UCLA might – well, USC, I think, is really – I think the only other team really in the Pac-12. I know Oregon is kind of hit or miss. I don't really think they have it. I think it's they'll also lose just Iowa. a new era. It's also just a new era. I mean, you're saying that you know these teams, the Blue Bloods, are, 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 are gone. I just think it's a new era of college basketball where a lot of these star players, like a guy like Cunningham, is going to go be the guy on an Oregon State because some of those programs, Duke, UNC – uh, some of the bigger programs, even Syracuse, they're under the spotlight. Uh, and I'm not saying players don't want that. I think a lot of those guys in the high school circuit and the, and the AAU circuit and, and and obviously some of the top high school players in the country, they want to play in those big schools. But at the same time, I don't know. I mean, there's obviously shady stuff that goes on, illegal stuff that goes on, uh, you know, as it pertains to recruiting uh-huh. uh, and, and paying players and giving them uh, rewards. All I'm going to say is those teams, Duke, Syracuse, UNC, Kentucky, Kansas, they're all in the spotlight. I mean, Oregon State, Oklahoma State. Look at look at a guy like John Moran. John Moran didn't go to like yeah. uh, Duke. I mean, he didn't go to the because I think that's the future. The players that are that are excelling in the in the bigger names, they're gonna change the way college basketball is. I mean, it started in the NBA and now we're seeing it where shooters are, is the game. I mean, Syracuse can single handedly win games with a guy like Buddy Beheim, just like you know, in the NBA for a while it was Steph Curry, Clay Thompson. That changed the game in the NBA. Now we're seeing that effect now trickle down into the NCAA, which is huge for the game of the NCAA. It's just going to see it's going to be a little bit of a readjustment process. And I think Duke will bounce back next year. I think Syracuse will bounce back next year, especially if Buddy Beheim returns. Syracuse will be great next year um, in a better position. Maybe they get Brahma back for a little bit um, as well, and obviously bring in some more recruits. Syracuse is poised for a nice a nice team, and obviously the teams that are still around can't say that UNC. Is, is going to struggle next year. I mean, yeah. they have a bunch of guys and they're going to get new guys as well. But all I'm saying it's is there, there's a little bit of a different uh, NCAA than maybe we're used to seeing. And I think that has a lot to do with the NBA and a lot to do with the different style of basketball that we're now, you know, is becoming more mainstream. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with everything you said too. Because again, even I think Andy mentioned it, like a St. Bonaventure team, like this team has nine juniors. Some of these, their, their big, whole starting some, lineup is juniors. Like I think they're all coming. Like back. a lot, a lot of these kids have been playing with each other for years. And like you said, you look at a blue blood team, and you got kids that are one and done, ego, egotistic. They want the ball. They want to be the star. And to be honest, I think that's always what kind of happens with Kentucky. We saw Kentucky really hasn't been dominant since again since like the Carl Anthony Towns and the John Walls. I mean, this year I thought they had. I know BJ Boston is going back, and I thought he was gonna. Everyone thought he was gonna be a top ten pick, but this Kentucky team it's just these young kids. I think they just can't live in the moment yet and like you said there's a lot of kids that there's a lot of schools like duke and north carolina i wouldn't even say i want someone on their team if anything i look at a gonzaga and i look like a Suggs and a top prospect a stud that really does something so yeah the game is completely changing and you're going to deal with just a lot of 
veteran kind of teams. Well, and also if you're a star, if you're an absolute stud, like if you're the number one recruit, the number one high school basketball player, and, and you can go anywhere in the country. And, and I'm just going to be realistic for a second. We're about the same age, uh, you know, college age or around college age. And what I will say is, do you really want to go sit in the classroom at Duke? I, if you know you're going to the NBA in one year, if you know no. you're one and done, do you really want to go sit in the classroom at Duke? If you know that your future is in the NBA and you know that that's what you want to do and you're, you're, you're why not go be the guy at a, at a school like Oklahoma State? Everyone's going to be all over you. You're going to be you're going to be the guy. And then in the classroom, you can kind of mess around. And I hate to say that, but that's just the truth of the matter. And I think that's what's going on a little like bit because that. schools like UNC, that's a hard ass school. Oh, yeah. Schools you like a tutor. Duke, that's a hard ass school. UNC, we know that, you know, they cheat on the test scores and Roy Williams is giving them free oh, classes. Oklahoma we, we State, you can have a good time. Now. I actually love that. That's a great point. Well, I'm just saying, I, I I think if you had a one and done and you know, okay, I'm going to college for one year. Am I going to go sit in a classroom at Duke and no. take a microeconomics, uh, you know, level, for whatever it is, uh, you know, calculate, whatever, whatever class it is. I just don't see Kate Cunningham sitting in, in a Duke classroom. What happened with, with the Giants? Uh, big, up, big update in the NFL world for anyone watching us out there. The New York Giants have just agreed to a deal with Kenny Galladay. So our, our wide receiving core is like a hot mess. We have Sterling Shepard, Kenny Galladay, X line. We just love the X Lions players. What, 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 what do you guys think about the Deshaun Watson stuff? Because uh, I, I'm somebody that obviously I, I look into things, especially when, you know, one plus one uh, equals two. I just think it's an interesting timing of this whole thing it's interesting to see the timing of sexual it's kind of like a presidential election i mean when the presidential election was going on you know people came out and talked about uh you know trump or 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 a sexual cases that came up against trump and then it was uh when uh the guy was going for the supreme court right he was uh kavanaugh was going for the supreme court as soon as he was up for the supreme court what happened sexual uh harassment was brought up and it's the same thing here in the nfl when a guy like Deshaun Watson's in the news every single day. He's on the front page every single day, and he wants to leave and go somewhere else. All of a sudden, it's convenient for somebody to come out. And I'm not saying that any of this stuff didn't happen. Uh, and obviously, like I said, every everything needs to be taken completely seriously. And, and I've, all I'm saying is I think the timing is a little bit suspect for me. And it doesn't mean that the woman's lying. It doesn't mean anything. I believe you know what she's saying. All I'm saying is I think the timing of yeah. it is a little bit suspect. Oh, uh, and, and and I and I really think it's a tough situation for not only the Texans, not only for Deshaun Watson, but the NFL in general and every team that potentially is going to land a guy like Deshaun Watson. Well, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think the biggest problem right now is yeah, it's very fishy timing. It's typical stuff, and I think I read something that the Houston actual police department has zero records of anything that has gone on. So supposedly there's I, again, I my problem is like you kind of said. Right now, it's the city of Houston against Deshaun Watson. If anything, I just think it's like a little bit of a revolt. You're not going to just get away, you know, even keel, clean. Like, we're going to try and stir up something. And if anything, I know a lot of teams are probably going to look like this. We're not going to get the Deshaun Watson deal until this is really cleared up, if anything. Mainly, they just delayed themselves some time. So, I guess my question is to the people to my left here, uh, Frank and Andy, um, you know, talking about Deshaun Watson, where does he end up next season? Do you think he's anywhere next season? Do you think he's wearing a Texans jersey next season? Do you think he's somewhere else? And, and, and what's your go-to take there for the Deshaun Watson? And one more time here, I'll say it. LSU is pulling away here. Three minutes, 30 seconds to go, 72 to 58. Uh, the Bonnie's trying to stay around. Going to probably try to foul a little bit and trap a little bit. But it looks like LSU will be moving on in the tournament props, here. Props. Uh, and you got to give credit uh, turnover here. But going back to Deshaun Watson, where do you think he ends up next season? I mean, it'll be really interesting. I think uh, I won't comment too much on, obviously, on everything that's going on. I think it's important that all of this plays out and plays out correctly. Um, everything's gone through. Obviously, there's been multiple allegations that have been brought up over the past couple of days. So, um, and, and many of them civil suits as well, not necessarily criminal cases. I'm not sure about the other two. But uh, again, obviously, it's it's sad to see about a guy that, you know, we typically see as, as a really good guy off the court. So I think that that needs to play itself out. First of all, I don't think that a lot of movement would occur, I would say, before some of that gets handled. Uh, and some of that stuff doesn't necessarily always get handled quickly. But I think it is interesting to note that the Texans are making moves uh, to get other quarterbacks against signing Tyrod Taylor, like a $12 million deal, I think, one year. As well as uh, they picked up the uh, they, Ryan uh, Finley, yeah, traded Ryan Finley from the Bengals. Um, and again, I don't not that those are replacement level guys. I mean, Tyrod Taylor 
might be again. He's he's had issues in last year with with the punctured lung. I think was difficult for him. But I mean, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. I think that there are a lot of teams looking to address quarterbacks. And over the past number of years, we've seen year after year, um, six or seven or eight teams really looking for a quarterback every off season, which is kind of ridiculous in a way. But that's just how it goes. And quarterback and the value of having a good quarterback is is just emphasized uh particularly becoming more of a passing league so i mean in terms of one team i think that could actually use him. i mean there's there's been a lot of teams that have been like linked to him i mean uh you've heard the jets and I, mean, I, I think that a lot of i think that a lot of teams are looking to like address it through the draft as well so i don't know what exactly the market would really be and you know i guess how teams feel about this when it's said and done, I guess is another interesting thing, but yeah, I mean, it's also something to know too. I think this Houston Texans team like low key is, I don't want to say they've definitely, here's my problem with the Texans. They've made so many moves to get rid of all their good guys. I mean, hop fuller, you name it. They got rid of everybody. So I can't blame Deshaun for being pissed, but running back wise, they got Ingram. They got Philip Lindsay. I'm not saying they're studs, but to be completely honest with you, if I had Mark Ingram and Philip Lindsay in my backfield, like, that's not a bad little combo. Yeah, but it's a terrible offseason if you were I, to lose, I, no, of course. if you were to lose JJ Watt and Deshaun Watson in the same offseason, no matter who you, you add, Definitely. you're probably not adding a guy as good on your defense as JJ Watt. Right. You're probably not adding a guy as I good agree. in your offense as a as a um as a Deshaun Watson. Definitely. So all, all I'm saying is it's a pretty shitty off uh, off season because if you're a Texans fan, you thought Deshaun was your guy. You signed the long term deal, you thought your team was set thought Harden ready, was your ready, guy ready too. to go for 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 years and years to come. Uh, and all of a sudden, to be where we are today is kind of interesting. And I think that's really going to be uh, the storyline moving forward. I think the Texans are going to be terrible next season uh, and terrible the year after that and terrible the year after that. I think this is something that could put a, a, a team in a hole. And that's why they're playing hardball. That's why the Texans are playing as hard as they are and saying, we're not going to trade you because they know they lose to Sean Watson. They're, they're, they're done. They're, they're re- done they're for four years. As a franchise, four years at least. They're reset as a franchise is totally. So obviously losing Deshaun Watson would be huge. And unless they're going to get an absolute massive package for him, I wouldn't be giving him up either. He signed a contract to be your quarterback. Yes, it's become a player power kind of league. All the leagues have NBA, NHL. You look all over MLB. Players kind of control and have the leverage in most situations. But this is a time where you're seeing an organization – using their leverage. And I think it's okay, honestly, because he signed a contract to be with them. So I honor the contract. I get you don't want to be there and you want to go play somewhere else, but you know what? You chose to be there. That was your choice. I get some things change and things are different now. And some things went not how you wanted to be, but you've been in the league for a couple of years, bro. Like you're really good, but like you don't need to be on in on every GM decision or who the general manager becomes or who the coach is. You don't see Russell Wilson getting all those talks. I mean, now he's complaining about it. He's won a Super Bowl. He's been in the league for almost 10 years now. So pipe down to Sean Watson. Calm down. Come on, just be, get on the field. I understand you want to be on a different team, but get on the field. It's okay. Like, yeah, if, if there was – if a coach – if you didn't need coaches and, and players could coach, there'd be no need to pay a guy like Pete Carroll a shit ton of money uh, or, or pay coaches a shit ton of money uh, because – that's what you're paying them for. So the organization believes in you as the quarterback. Let them do their job and, and and find players that they believe around you. If you want to say something, go in the media. I mean, you have a social media. You've been using it perfectly throughout the course of this whole you know scenario. You have social media. You have press conferences every single day. If you want somebody to come to your team, you could totally say something in the media. Mm-hmm. There, there's and, other ways to go about it than what he's doing. Definitely. And what I will say is, what is the – and it's a question to everyone up here. What is the repercussions of this? Because we see it go down in the NBA with James Harden going to the Nets, leaving Houston. It's funny that's Houston again, but he just said, I'm not playing. I don't want to be on here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I'm going to gain weight. I don't want to be here. And eventually he got traded. And Deshaun Watson's doing the same thing. I'm not going to play until you trade me. I'm not going to do it. I won't. I will sit out. I'm not – and so all I'm saying is I think the repercussions is moving forward, you're going to have teams not sign contracts with big name players without the no trade clause. I think any team would be dumb at this point to, to put a it's no like trade a clause up. in there. Take the no trade clause out because if something like this happens, you could trade this on Watson wherever. Yeah. And you as the organization have the power right back because you could say, okay, you, you don't want to be here. Well, Cleveland's offering us blah, 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 blah. Or, okay, you know what? You don't want to be here. Well, go name any other. They did know, that with kind of AB. Didn't yeah. they tell AB he was going to go to the, to who they tell you they were going to go to the Bills and he freaked out. Absolutely freaked out. I feel like it was AB like back in the day. 
and they just said, oh, you want to get traded? Okay, we have a trade right now. I think a Bleacher Report came up. It literally said Antonio Brown has been traded to the Buffalo Bills, and then he went out on Twitter and said, what is going on? Like, that was not anything that anyone, like, he knew about. So, yeah, I agree. I would, if, I'm, if I'm the Texans, I would definitely use it as some leverage, but... Yeah, I, if I'm in Texans, I'm just talking oh, about teams, oh, teams oh, moving oh, forward. Oh, yeah. Oh, teams in general. Yeah, there's definitely – you got to look back at I so many the things. the repercussions of, of, you know, Deshaun Watson right now is going to be teams should not put a no-trade clause in the contract. So you could trade them yeah. wherever because right now Deshaun has all the power. If you say, I'm going to trade to Cleveland, yeah. Deshaun can hop in and say, nope, I don't want to go to Cleveland, but I'm not playing for you. So it, it's, it's bullshit what's going on, and there's got to be something that changes, and I think that's kind of the storyline. But – Andy, I'll let you kind of call this game because you kind of have been spot on since the beginning of the game. So LSU currently 76 61. I'll let you close out the game here. Uh, absolutely. Um, so, and so, I mean, so call it out. 76 61, as Matt said, uh, the Bonnies are down 15 to LSU. Me and Frank today, we're both on LSU pretty heavily. We both thought they were just the better team. I mean, listen, I could see why you guys were on the Bonnies. I'm not going to say here, I told you so anything like that. The Bonnies are a very good team. I think they just got put in an unfortunate matchup with LSU. Similar story to San Diego State, kind of those mid-major teams that we don't really get to see. They got kind of shafted on their seeds a little bit, and the teams that they had to face against two teams that got under and were missing out on two teams that probably could have been dancing for at least a second game and gave, 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 another, gave us a good game against someone else as well. But LSU is dribbling out the clock now. The clock is about to hit zero for the 15-point victory as Frank and I roll on in our bracket both. And I'm mad. I feel like you had LSU in your bracket originally. I did. I but did. you may have changed to Bonaventure via the pick fault maybe you saw. Saw the artificial intelligence. And you yeah, I was, I, I, the reason I liked uh, the Bonaventure, I've been following throughout the course of the season. I think they've been a fun team to bet on. They would have done really well in the NIT. Uh, they would have won it. Yeah, I agree. They're, that they're extraordinarily good for that type of basketball. I just didn't think LSU was this good. Let's see what they could do. Like you said, moving forward, they got an interesting. They got a great matchup as long as Michigan holds on, obviously against Texas it's gonna be Southern. Tough. It's gonna be tough. I, I mean, this this East region is definitely one of the most interesting regions uh, there is because think about it. the The final four in the East is, is going to be Michigan, LSU, Colorado, and Florida State. I mean, that's going to be fun to watch. Colorado plays Florida State two days from yeah, now. That, that's that, going to that, be that's the one. That's the couple round of thirty two. And then the other side too, you got UConn, Alabama potentially as the winner matchup in that round. And then you would also have Texas and BYU and or UCLA, depending on which side you're backing. So a lot of great matchups to come in that region. I mean, I think also Illinois region is one of the best ones with all the matchups as well. There's a lot of great teams over there. So it's going to be exciting the rest of March and into April, what we're going to be seeing with all these great teams playing some great, great games and competing for a national championship. Absolutely. Absolutely. So pick ball nation, we will be live tonight uh, again around Whenever that tips off, again, I'm not even going to say a time. It should yeah, be around sure, 7 10, but with everything going on, the COVID, the cleaning of the arenas, and obviously games could go to overtime. Games could last longer than we thought. There could be, you know, unexpected. Whatever time the tip is for UConn versus Maryland, the pick vault will be going live. We'll throw the uh, link out in the bio on Instagram and, and on Twitter. But make sure you guys tune in later for today's episode. We're going to be jumping on during the UConn Maryland game. Tune in, call in again. We are happy you guys tuned in and we look forward to, you know, seeing you guys later tonight. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the Pick Vault and we are O U T out. Gold Tigers.